There's nothing to worry about. I'm your number one fan. He just goes a little mad sometimes. We all go a little mad sometimes. Whatever you do, don't fall asleep. Listen, asshole! No, you listen, you little bitch. You hang up on me again, I'll cut you like a fish. You know, it's Halloween. I guess everyone's a bad one good scare, huh? What an excellent day for an exorcism. I am Dracula. And as we continue our conversation on the Knights of Horror Radio, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Knights of Horror Radio. I know we were off air last week because we had a big weekend to prepare for, both Robbie and I. Sammy came in town. Hayes was with us, like always. My ride or die right there. She was with us, um, and we had a great weekend, a great Midsummer Scream weekend. Uh, we were just talking about before we uh, got into uh, on, on the live stream, here was that um you know we were talking about how every year just feels like for us it goes faster and faster it really does it's everything's happening and it feels so busy and, and like every day it's like oh we got to do this we got to do this or we're going here we got to you know we're going to go see this and it feels like the day is so long and it feels long but but when you when it rolls around to monday it's like, man, the weekend went by so quick and it felt so short. And, and you get those, you definitely get those midsummer scream withdraws. Oh, a hundred percent. Like, you know, I'm over here, uh, you know, all week we've been editing stuff. We actually today just got the last of our panels out and the John Murdy interview, by the way, nice, great job on the John. You got a John Murdy interview this year. Oh well. man, <laughs> I was going to tell you, the, I was going to tell you the same thing. Like, no, mine, it, I, I could have done a lot better. I was nervous. I stuttered a bunch of stuff. I, I just was not in the right mind space at that time, but uh, I did watch yours. I watched. I was watching him from the door record the <laughs> damn thing, and I got to. I didn't get to really hear what he had to say. So to get to hear what you had to say to John Murdy, bravo! Every year you're getting, you know, bigger and bigger. People are coming up to you. You're taking all these photos. Like no, seriously, man. Like, you know, you're you're stepping up every single year, and and this was a huge one for you. I, I remember our first time. If it weren't for you, I don't think I would have gotten to interview John Murdy. Let's just be honest. Oh, oh, we're talking about uh, no, no, we're was... talking about everything in general. But I'm just saying, oh, okay. like, okay, okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah. if it weren't for I mean, you, I'm... I wouldn't have gotten the opportunity to do that. And because of you, I've been able to, you know, progressively do it every single nah. year. Now nah. it was your turn to step up and do it, and you fucking knocked it out of the park. So if you guys have not seen <laughs> Rob's um, interview with John Murdy, it is on his channel right now. Go check it out. Uh, highly suggest that, um, but man, it just it flew by. But so much to talk about. Yes, uh, yes. I know you just did this on Haunt Talk, which you guys can catch tomorrow, uh, which might be a completely different video compared to this opinion video. We might be talking about completely different stuff. Um, yeah. But Scott and Rob have a episode coming out tomorrow, so go check that out on the Haunt Talk YouTube channel um, and see what they have to say and their opinions about Midsummer Scream. But we're going to get in the nitty-gritty. We're going to talk about all these panels. We're going to talk about all these announcements for all these different haunts. Uh, we're going to talk about some of our favorite moments, uh, Hall of Shadows, the show floor, cosplays, yeah. people we saw, uh, and just overall the weekend. So uh, let's start off with uh, Friday night. Obviously, we all were there. Uh, we, Friday night's usually uh, a simpler night for us where we get to actually enjoy the floor, enjoy the Hall of Shadows, yeah. um, and really just kind of soak in all that stuff because we're not really going to be able to see it as much uh, when the weekend kicks off. So, right. you know, uh, for me at least, for me and Sammy, you know, we did the Try Not to Get Scared Challenge. I know you were a huge part in playing in that role of, of helping promote that and helping being part of that storyline of what we, we accomplished within that three days. And um, we just had a blast with that. We, me and Scaredy Cat Vasquez, we went up against each other. Not going to say who won. If you were there, you know who won. <laughs> um, but you will find out tomorrow who won. 
Uh, we're posting that video tomorrow. I have uh, footage of Scaredy Cat Vasquez's reactions. I got footage of my reactions. And uh, we have the walkthroughs to put them as well. So it's going to be a fun time. That's going to be. So stay tuned tomorrow to see who the winner of the Try Not Get Skin Challenge is. Is it going to be end still? Or is it going to be end new? Ooh. Guess you got to find out tomorrow. Find out tomorrow. Um, but yeah, that was a lot of fun. Hall of Shadows killed it this year. Uh, a lot of great haunts in the Hall of Shadows, including yep. obviously the the big talk this weekend was the Lions Gate experience. Um, but I think Drex Society Scooby Doo really stole the show for me, and Santa Ana Haunt did a really good uh, like masquerade ball type thing, which was really fun. Um, I didn't get to catch a full Decayed Brigade show like I wanted to. Yeah, yeah. Um, but there were some times where I was in line by uh, Realm of Shadows. And the, okay. the show was going on Friday night, and I got to catch some of it from the line. I couldn't really see that well, but I had an idea what was going on. Um, you know what? I was going to say, you know what? It, it, I, I feel like the past past couple years, when you cover, like, especially panels and stuff like that, for, for people who um, cover the panels and, and what you know what's going to happen at the, at the parks and stuff, it's really hard to get from where the panels are to the hall of shadows to watch a show like the same thing for me like i caught glimpses of of decayed brigade which is you know it kind of just not upsets me but you know i'm disappointed because i really wish i could get in there more but it's like you know uh, you know there's people who who got to cover it and take pictures and stuff so i'm kind of like looking at their their footage and their their photography of it and it looks really cool but yeah unfortunately you know for us you know doing the things that we do and the coverage that we get it's just it, it sometimes it's really difficult to get in there for you know to save a spot and be in there for a for a, a show so you know it kind of sucks yeah uh overall though what do you, what were your overall thoughts as far as the hall of shadows went because there was a lot of funness in there and a lot of great times in there so what did you think of all these walkthroughs what did you think of what, we, what we're gonna see this haunt season from a lot of these independent and home haunts you know what? Uh, obviously, you know you said it right off the bat. You know the one that just was kind of like the the banger, Lionsgate. I I wasn't expecting that kind of, uh, you know, just the the facade, just that kind of uh, maze in in the Hall of Shadows. And then you know this is this is all I love all the mazes that are there. You know these home haunts that bring bring their mazes. You know we go we try to go to all of them when when they're you know, doing during haunt season when they're actually, you know, running. Um, but Lionsgate, I, I was just like for the first time them being there, I thought they really killed it. The properties that they brought. Um, I'm right there with you. Uh I always I always I think butcher their name. The is it Stretch Society, right? Drex Society, yeah. Drex Society. I really enjoyed the, their maze, not so much scary for me, but really fun. Nostalgia. I love yeah, yeah, I love Scooby Doo. I've always watched Scooby Doo. You know, Scooby Doo is one of those things where it was like, it, it kind of in the realm of spooky as for like kids kind of kind of area. It's a gateway, so, pretty much. Right, and, and so I watched that watched that growing up, and you know there was always it was never anything really like supernatural. There was always someone you know like you know kind of pulling the curtains and you know in disguise, and I like how they played into that throughout their their maze dread society always i mean they always do a phenomenal job and and you know i i gotta i gotta talk about our boys over at santa Ana hot yes and and what they did with the facade just i feel like it was a completely different kind of kind of maze that that we're not accustomed to seeing them do and then you know they had the the bar you know when you walked out and just the did you get to play with the triggers in there at all? I didn't get to go inside the bar, but we did go okay. inside the maze. But I know they were doing a kind of a dark harbor approach with that, where you can sabotage people in the maze. Right. So, so our boy Chewy over there, you know, he brought me in. He was showing me the triggers, and I got to push it a couple times. And and uh, the first time I did, like a, it was like the air, the air cannon, and I completely missed the people. He was just like, "Are you serious?" I was like, "I don't scare," so I don't know. Like, I don't know when to push the button, so I just pushed it and. But you know everyone in the Hall of Shadows, you know, um, you know they did a, a really good job. Uh, uh, Art Sideshow, I'm not, I don't remember like what their if they had like an actual name or if it was just like called the Sideshow. I think they did a really good job. Um, our the buddies, real Sideshow is what it was called. There you go, the real Sideshow. Our buddies, uh, you know, Danny uh, with the Real Family Adventures. Um, their their daughter, I think her name's Nini. I believe her name's Nini. Um, was scaring when I went through, and believe it or not. 
like caught me completely off guard and scared the crap out of me. So, so oh, I was just, yeah, yeah, yeah. She got me, she got me good. But you know, uh, was it in the uh, realm of shadows? They did a really good job. Just yeah. everyone in, everyone in there, man. Like, you know, uh, there was definitely it was smaller this year, but quality had just gone up. And we got to talk about uh, Fair Farm, them doing the whole like entrance into the hall of shadows and they even put that that little side uh kind of maze on the side right there just they they killed it everyone in the hall of shadows man you guys you guys just stepped it up completely and and you know thank you so much for you know kind of just making that a highlight of the event so i i had a good time going through there i wish i could have spent more time in there it, you know it, it's funny like each each parts of i i kind of break this down into you have your cosplayers, and that's a that's kind of an event in itself. You have the show floor, you have the Hall of Shadows, and you have the panels. There's like four kind of events going on inside this one big event. So it's it, again, it's always hard to like, okay, I'm gonna do this for an hour. I'm gonna do this for an hour. I'm gonna do so. You know, it's just especially but everyone, like every single year too. And like you said about, you know, it, you know, this event's growing every year. So every right, you know, it, it, right. it makes it kind of a little bit more difficult knowing that. We would like to spend more time in those areas, but right. it's just you have to get in line very early now, and it's like oh, just oh, to yeah. get and a I decent mean, spot. Yeah, and we'll, I'm sure we'll talk about it with, like, HHN. Oh, but, my you God, know, dude. We'll talk crazy, about it for crazy. sure. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, show floor was great. A lot of great vendors out there. We picked up a few things. Um, I want to give a, a special shout-out. I I, I, gotta, I forget the name. Don't don't quote me, but it was um, – so Sammy's sister was down this weekend helping vend with her friend. Ooh, nice, um, nice. So we, so over the weekend we uh, were fortunate enough to uh, they let us set up base camp there so we can leave our stuff and kind of walk more freely with uh, the convention center and um, whatnot. And so we would leave our backpacks. We even bought a case of water so they can get you know hook us up with you know have some water on ice for us and stuff. And nice. they came in such clutch this weekend. They were a godsend, and I owe them awesome. a ton. Um, they're called, uh, the, the business is called Colt Creep. Now, if you guys saw Colt me on Creep. Saturday, I was wearing a Colt Creep t-shirt, which was that t-shirt with the skeleton, uh, print on it. And it was red. Um, I was wearing that under my, um, my Pennywise, um, button up this weekend. So, uh, they are just phenomenal, uh, Colt Creep. Uh, she, I, I just met, uh, her this weekend and she was just a very sweet person, a very welcoming person. And, uh, they have some amazing products, uh, at the booth. So if you catch them, I know they're going to be at October village coming up. So if you see them in October okay. village, visit their booth. Uh, I believe that's a free event, um, uh, and support local businesses. So that's really cool. So if you see them at October village, tell them Knights of Horse sent you. And get yourself one of those, um, one of those shirts with the skeleton print on it, because that ain't gonna be the last time we wear it on Nights of War. I, I just have to wash it because I got very sweaty with it that same night. <laughs> um, Rob knows, uh, <laughs> but I was there. yeah, he was there. So it's just one of those things where, um, yeah, I want to give a shout out to Colt Creep for this weekend. Uh, I, I really thank uh, her and Celine for for really coming in clutch, and they actually introduced us to. Uh, they had a booth right next to some local filmmakers who had just released their own feature film. They're from Oklahoma. They are a part of, I think, the Cherokee Reservation, um, okay. and they have a lot of land. So they were like, "Why don't we use it to our advantage and film a movie?" Uh, the movie was described as American Pie meets Friday the 13th. Um, Interesting. Yeah, so sh big shout-out to them. I have an interview that will be in the vlog on Friday with them, a good 15-minute interview. Um, I, I actually may just release the interview on its own because of how long it is. I'll probably cut some clips of it into the vlog, but that, will be on, that interview will be on the channel regardless this week, um, maybe tomorrow. But nice. uh, we got to interview uh, some of the cast members, the director and the writer and producer. Uh, and they're all – they looked uh, – you know, I could be very wrong about this, but they looked very young in the sense of that's a good thing because that means oh, they're yeah. up-and-coming filmmakers and they just took a shot to make their first feature. Um, they were very nice to – one of the actors gave us a free autograph, uh, which I have framed over there that I'm going to hang up pretty soon. And they, they actually gave us a copy of the film, so – uh, that nice. was super awesome of them to do that. Um, Celine was saying that, like, I don't think they really got, like, they wanted more of that this weekend, and so I was just happy to do that. 
Um, looking forward to watching the film pretty soon. I'm going to um, be watching it with Sammy pretty soon so we can see what's up. And then we'll uh, even probably throw a little review on Nights on the Radio with it. So nice. uh, it should be a lot of fun. But, yeah, it was a great weekend, man. I mean, the show floor just killed it. I got some Danny Spooky Treats. I got some. Uh, I got my Gushers. They're actually, I still have half of them, I think, in the uh, – refrigerator over there so i might eat those pretty soon but uh, i got my my chamoy gushers love those hayes loves their lollipops um, okay i haven't had their lollipops yet i should probably refrigerate this for friday because this is the one she left in my backpack so i'm pretty sure she's gonna be happy when i give it to her on this weekend <laughs> um but yeah hayes loves the lollipops we, we're big supporters of danny spooky treats we go so oh, yeah we love them time. we they, love them great snacks um, and it's a great little family business. Uh, such a beautiful family, but a very nice family. Um, very welcoming and very always open to talk and everything. So, I yeah, we love Danny Spooky Treats. Highly suggest them. Deadly, Deadly Sweet Treats as well was there. Oh, yes, uh, yes. They had a line every single day. Big shout out to them. I didn't even get to get anything because the line was always. I, I'm, I'm right there with you. I, <laughs> I saw the line and I was just, you know what? It, I like okay so so we've I've seen them and I know you've seen them like at a uh, uh, Halloween Depot Halloween and, Depot like, we've seen them all do, over yeah yeah but you know we see that's where I first saw them as Halloween Depot yeah. when they do ho- their Horrorville event and you know we picked up some stuff and spe- you know I pick up stuff and I just their their sweets sweet. are oh. delicious like Chef's everything kiss. they yeah everything they do is delicious so I already know when I go to these events specifically like Midsummer Scream they have a line and i'm just like i see the line and i'm like i want some so bad but yeah but i'm like really like you're gonna wait like 20 minutes 30 minutes and then you might yeah. even not have what you want yeah. there by the time yeah, you but you know fun. what but you know what G- good on them yes. good on them because the, i i if i go and they're sold out i'm happy like yes my 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 sweet tooth is upset but I'm happy because when I see any of these vendors, they're like, "Oh, we're sold out of this." Or, yeah. And even like even like uh, Danny's, like they were sold out on like, Sunday. And I was yeah. Just, yeah, yeah. I was like, "That's awesome, man!" Like I love I love seeing that because like you're saying, like w- some of these vendors, we do know them. Like we have relationships with them. We talk to them. We see them, and to see their success is just like that, you know that's awesome. Yeah, hundred percent. And um, I want to give a big shout out to Danny herself because uh, she had. I think one of the coolest baby strollers of all time <laughs> that I was just like, I think I might have to buy my kid that kind of stroller when I have, a, when I have a baby. Uh, but that was just such a cool thing. Um, and I, I would watch her walked around with it in the hall of shadows and everything. And I was like, that thing is so freaking cool. Uh, but you know, I, that's why I bought my Chamoy Gushers on Friday. Cause I knew they were going to sell out that weekend. Smart man. Smart yeah, man. I was like, I knew they were going to sell out. Got to get my, I haven't had them in so long too. Cause every time I go there, that's the first thing that's sold out. That's like the, one of their popular hits right there. Yeah. They're um, good. They they're are good. They are very good. And I'm a big Gushers guy. And then you add a little Chamoy onto them makes it even better. So, uh, yeah, huge shout out to a uh, deadly, uh, deadly sweet treats and, um, Danny spooky treats for, uh, at least Danny. I know she sold out for sure. They probably sold out every single day too. Wouldn't doubt it with the lines that they had. And yeah, we're not we're never complaining about the lines for these things. Yes, our sweet tooth may be unsatisfied, <laughs> but we are very happy for all yes, these small yes. vendors because they are they are thriving, they are staying in business, and we want to see them stay in business because we love the products and the the, the stuff that they make for us. Um, and whether it's clothes, stickers. Um, obviously we love the sweets and the food, but, uh, you know, any, whatever it is, you know, it's, it's just great to see, um, small businesses thriving. So, uh, yes, big yes. shout out to everyone on the show for this week. You guys brought it. You guys killed it. There was so much to buy. If I had my entire paycheck and I didn't have to pay any bills, it would have probably been spent that weekend. Right. Oh, there. for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I had to be like, I had to, you know, I only bought a couple things and did you get a t-shirt at least. I know you're a t-shirt I got, guy. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did get a t-shirt. Did you get a Which t-shirt. one did you get? Did you get a Midsummer Scream one or did you get something I, else? I I went to the was it Tino Evil and I got a um I got the like the Abbey Road but it, not like the, the horror, not not the slashers. It was the Nightmare Before Christmas one. Oh, now you got a Christmas and a, so no one can tell you anything if you wear that on Christmas because you know it's technically yeah. a Christmas movie too. Christmas. Also, also just got to give um someone else a shout out. I got to give Tony from the Knights of Horror a shout out for getting me this dope yes uh kind of jersey look at this thing right here i don't i don't have it buttoned up because it's okay but 
There it, we go. I'm you glad it fits. Right it looks like it fits, it fits good. It, yeah, it fits perfect. I love it. I was oh, just like, man. oh man, yeah. This is and look at it. Look at this little patch right here. The patch. I knew when you, I knew when I saw the design, <laughs> you were gonna love the design. Immediately. Oh yeah, I love. You were the I one person it. I knew that was gonna love this design more than anyone. I loved, I um, loved it. I was just like, I, because you gave it to me, and I saw you wearing yours, and you know, it's just like you have your backpack on and everything, so I really couldn't look at it. Right. Um, I brought it home, popped it open, looked at it, and I was just like, this is dope. Yeah, I think. What did we put? We did we put the Halloween hour in the back of yours? No, it says uh, Rob. I think it's Rob. Rob. Okay, we put yeah, Rob, yeah, yeah. but. Uh, we did put the year that we we uh, the, so the the whole point of the jersey except Hayes is because uh, you know Hayes gets the exception of getting the three thirty three that's her number I respect it but for every member of the Knights of Horror every jersey that we have I put the number uh, of the year they joined so for me it was seventeen the year we started the channel Sammy was nineteen Rob was twenty um, so uh, we got a little baseball team forming here yeah yeah you know but you know. I, I wanted to I bought those jerseys earlier this year um, and you know there there have been times I forgot to bring it or something I forgot to give it to someone well we're just always busy we're and always we like yeah it, it, anytime anytime we see each other it's like we're at an event or something and we're just like it's busy we're always busy like we're hanging out but like at the same time we're both filming stuff too you know it's like yeah, we'll talk yeah. a little bit and then oh wait let me go let me go shoot this real quick you right, know, right, like, and that's like, oh, well, what do you like? What are you gonna do? I'm gonna get, get this. All right, you get this. I'll get this. Yeah. Da, da, da. And that's like, oh, how how how's it going? You okay? Da, 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 da. But but yeah, we're yeah. always it's always. And then afterwards, we're like, hey, dude, like, how are you doing? <laughs> so how you really doing? Yeah. After and it becomes therapy. Really, yeah. And then we're like, we're walking out, and like, how do you feel? Oh, I feel pretty good. Oh man, I'm yeah. tired. Da, 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 da. But yeah, it, recapping it, it's the all, night, everything. Yeah, it's all good. But all now, good. um, so uh, yeah, you you well earned the stars and stripes on the night's or years ago uh it just took this long for me to get a journey to you um <laughs> no worries but, no worries you know I, I i the way i look at it is it could be so cool when we all squat up and wear them uh sammy got his this weekend too he me and him wore it on friday uh hey showed up with hers on friday as well a lot of great compliments a lot of people loving the jerseys what they look like the design we had a lot of people come up and tell us uh, like where'd you guys get those from those are so dope um so uh, Sunday, I finally was like, hey, I didn't forget it this time. I have it. And Rob was <laughs> like, I don't have anywhere to put it, so now I got to carry it. But well, I ended up throwing it in my I threw it in you my bag. In your bag. I was just yeah, like, was I just crammed yeah. it in there. Which it was like, it's cool. It's just a shirt. So I was like, what's the worst that's going to happen? It's not like you can't take that yeah. shit to the dry cleaners or anything. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, but um, yeah. So Robbie is now a, a certified. Uh, he's always been a certified, but now he's got the jersey to prove it. Yeah, um, I got the evidence. He's got the evidence. And not to mention, it just it doubles as a Halloween Hour jersey, too. Yeah, it does. I, li I like it. I'm just like, I'm going to throw. I'm gonna walk around the house, just keep it on, throw it on. Yeah, I like that. Robin's going to get so sick of you real quick. <laughs> she's already sick of me. <laughs> she's I, don't a, yeah, I don't need a jersey. Yeah, it's marriage. I don't need a jersey for that. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so now going into Saturday, man, um, you know, we – had some panels uh you went yeah. to one i went to another so i'll let you talk about yours i'll talk about mine because it was at the same time uh but if you saw it we were able to put both panels up on our channel thanks to rob uh hooked it up with the castle dark footage um, i tried i do apologize to everyone there's only one panel that i will not be able to put out and that is 13th floor entertainment due to the sole purpose that i a uh, lot the, the the i think the file got lost or something got corrupted i yeah. don't have it it is what it is. There are other great content creators out there that have it posted. Highly suggest you go watch it. 13th Floor Entertainment did announce a lot of fun stuff, including uh, the new location for Delusion, uh, some new updates for Haunted Hayride, a new uh, reimagined maze for Queen Mary's Dark Harbor, and, of course, their, um, their jack-o'-lantern event that looks really fucking cool. Uh, I think we might have to hit that one up this year. The, the lights one, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that one, that one does look pretty cool. I know it's more. That one's more. Um, it's more not catered to family, but yeah, catered to family is like a walk around kind of thing. But it could be fun, man. I think it'd be a lot of yeah, cool. Yeah, oh, yeah uh, sure. but if you guys were in attendance at that panel too, there was uh, free tickets if, for both. So that's why I want to go. <laughs> I was like, I got a hayride ticket and I got a jack lantern ticket. I think I'm gonna that's take right. advantage of it this year. Um, that's right. 
thank you, thirteen four. We appreciate you. Yes, but yes, uh, Rob's going to delusion this year, and that's there's no ends it for butts. That's just you what's what? gonna happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I I Listen, think I am delusion. I, you know what? Uh, okay, we're gonna talk about something later that I did last okay. night that I know for a fact you would not do. I was I even would. hesitant doing it, yeah, but I had wouldn't. the time of my life last night, and I couldn't stop thinking about it today. We'll talk Good about that you. later in the show. Good for you. We'll talk about it later <laughs> in the show. Uh, talk to me about uh, Castle Dark. Now, Castle it's Dark good. is a park that you and I both uh, frequent sometimes. You go a little bit more than I do. I, I'm going to start trying to get out there more and more. But um, we got to go back in 2021. We were right. invited out. We had a fucking time of our lives. It was me, you, Rob, and Sammy. Um, I think Hayes was there. No, I was not with Hayes yet. No, no, I don't think you're. Yeah, it was just, I think it was just Hayes, us four. Us we four, up, yeah. Yeah, we ended up playing uh, a, a fucking mini golf. torturous round of mini golf. Yeah. <laughs> if yeah, you guys want to see that video, <laughs> it's on the <laughs> channel. We have yet to do another golf tournament, but you know, maybe we'll do it like the Olympics. It'll be something like we do every four years. Yeah, every four years. But just so you guys know, I did win the. He did. Mini Rob golf is tournament. currently the uh, Knights of Horror mini golf mini tournament golf champion. Champion. Um, so. so, yeah. That is a thing, but uh, talk to me about Castle Dark, bro. What can we expect for 2024? I know there's a lot of uh, revamps on the on the horizon, a lot of reimagining. So talk to me. What did they announce? What can we expect? So so Castle Dark uh, is bringing. Last year they had two mazes. They're bringing back a third maze, and then um, I believe they they're gonna do some kind of VR thing. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I, uh, that was that one. I was kind of I wasn't really sure on it, how it was gonna work, but they are for sure bringing back three mazes. Um, one is Funhouse of the Demented, which uh, I'm gonna take a wild guess here, and that's gonna be more like a clown kind of you know orient orientated kind of maze where you know, circus maybe kind of thing, which I think they do really. I've seen the clown stuff that they do at Castle Dark, and I think they do a really good job. Um, a labyrinth. This labyrinth one is supposed to be like kind of like obviously a maze, and and you know they didn't really like, you know they want to keep some stuff a surprise when you go through there, but you know they're talking about like hedges and you get, you can actually get lost in wow. here. So That's so that yeah yeah. And then this one, this one, I am, I am, I'm gonna go through it, but I am hesitant. This the other one they announced was called Seance. Oh, okay. Yes. So I'm I'm gonna go through it because that's what I do. I I I troop Rob. it out. Yeah. I, I I I gut it out. But this one they're gonna be. You know, this one's gonna revolve around. They have this new character, which is the witch, and they were handing out you know trading cards and kind of yes. stuff like that, which I thought was really cool. Very kind of gets you immersed. You know, immersed into what they're doing over there. Um. So so this one is revolved around the witch. And I, I, from what I understand, keep talking. I'm listening. I got the cards right here, but I got the headphones oh, yeah, on. Keep going. Okay, yeah. So, so, so what they're what they're gonna do is, uh, you kind of go into this, and and you know, I, I don't know if it's a Ouija board or it's Ouija board like, but you don't have to do it. But it, you know, you're gonna have to like kind of like, they have this thing where you're gonna have to like kind of move around. But again, that was something that that someone had asked. You don't have to do it. Uh, maybe they'll just let you walk through or, you know, someone tells you a story and you can walk through. But because that's what I was just like, I, you know, even if it is pretend. No, thank you. Yeah, no, <laughs> I, 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 I 100 percent am on board with you. We are in the same boat when it comes to that specific. Yeah, yeah, board. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So so but then, you know, they also they also talked about uh, uh, the slider shows coming back. Sliders of oh, the nice. kingdom and then uh, tea time with uh, Lady Lou and also the, the, the these are kind of like shows and uh the countess allura is going to have i think her her kind of show i don't know if it's like a burlesque kind of show um you know but th that kind of vibe but more obviously more not like family family friendly but more because there are kids there so it's not going to be full-on burlesque but that kind of right. like that kind of show and i you know they've they've had uh those type of shows before uh at castle dark but overall i think um Castle Dark really, really, uh, I was excited for them to have their panel. Uh, you know, like, like, like you said, you know, we've been going to Castle Park for a while and in and, and that, you know, Castle Dark as well. So it's really cool to see them kind of like before they had booze, a booth and, and now they have a panel and they get to talk about the things that, you know, they're doing. And and, and they even said this uh, in the panel, like Castle, Castle Park is when it changes, you know, it's alter ego Castle Dark. 
they're actually you know really affordable they always have yeah. tickets on sale and and you know you can if you have a, a season pass you know they typically give you a discount so um always keep an eye out for cat if you know you're looking to go to castle park for castle dark uh keep an eye out you know on their instagram or the website because they always doing oh you know uh 15 off or 15 bucks off this or you know if you buy this you get this for free so um, just keep an eye out because I, you know, like I've said before, I really enjoy Castle Dark. I think it's a really kind of like homey park. It's very small, but they also have rides. They have the mini golf, and then you also have the mazes. And again, I, I emphasize this very highly. The characters there j- kill it. Always yeah. kill it. They do a good job. They always no one no one's just kind of like oh let me walk around. They're they're going at you. They're trying to scare you. Like it, like any of the other big parks, so yeah. I, you know, I can't recommend, uh, especially like, for me, like I take my my niece and nephew there, and they're on the younger side. They're they're you know like nine and ten. So, but I feel like that's a kind of like a good uh, I starter guess, haunt. Yeah, starter haunt for them. You know, right. it, it may not if you're looking for horror nights or not scary farm, not the place. But you know, I think it's a good starter haunt. It's a good like kick back kind of like oh let's go do a couple mazes and again very very affordable so yeah but very excited for all the stuff they got going on over there no and i you know you hit the nail on the coffin with that statement um every time we've been invited out to castle park for an event uh whether it's castle dark anything else uh, like the the mardi gras and everything they have yeah. uh treated us with amazing amazing yes, all the time. Um, hospitality and you know it is just an incredible um that they keep inviting you out and keep they've invited us out a couple times and uh no they they are great hosts and um they they really are passionate about trying to make this just as big as those haunts um right now if you were at the event this weekend you uh if you went up to their booth or if you saw any of their their uh, people out there they gave away these awesome cool playing cards now i have i think it was a set of 7 um which is, I think, all everything to do with the event this year. But first off, we got Harley the Rubber Chicken. And in the back, they actually <laughs> have little character bios and, like, little strengths and fears and defenses and hit points. So it reminds me of Pokemon thought, yeah. and Yu-Gi-Oh. I, like, thought that, cool. I, thought that was, I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, like count, their, oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, I mean, dude, Pokemon, fucking Yu-Gi-Oh, you know what I mean? This is right? great. And I, I need to get card sleeves for these now because these are probably going to be rare. Uh, but this was this is the one I heard was the most rare right here, which was count, uh, Countess Elora. Uh, that's what okay. he was, he was telling us that that was the most rare. Um, these are really cool plating cards and they're not like, they're not like cheap or anything. Like these are good quality par- playing cards. Um, no name, the clown right there. Little character bio. I have the pumpkin, uh, gr- I'm going to butcher this right now. G- G- Gordo. Gordo. Oh, Gordo. 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 Yeah, yeah. The pumpkin King Gordo. Pumpkin King Gordo right there. Really cool playing cards. We have uh, Belladonna right there. Uh, we have the Junior Twins. They look like a lot of fun, huh? And we have the Witch, which I'm assuming this is going to be the Seance Witch. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, what a great way to promote the event with these cards, you know, and, and again, the collector's items. These are going to be rare. They probably only printed so much, and we were fortunate enough uh, at the beginning, I think, of Saturday's show or Sunday's show, we got an entire set. So, um yeah, man, I'm definitely going to be purchasing some card sleeves for these. Get them, uh, keep them clean, keep them good, keep them pristine. Uh, and hopefully in future years, they release more cards with more characters and start building a fucking set. Like, they'd be one of the first people to do that. My camera is moving. That is hilarious. Uh, How is it moving? Because it's on a tripod and I moved it with my foot right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, funny. So, yeah, Castle Dark did a great job. Now, meanwhile, he was in the Castle Dark panel. Which, uh, by the way, uh, big shout out to Rob. We even included his channel, everything. Anything time, anytime Rob helps us, anytime. It's it's not even a fucking. It ain't even a question. We always link his stuff in there. So make sure to subscribe to Rob's channel. Um, almost at eight hundred. Almost, almost at eight hundred, and then we want to get him to a thousand before the end of the year. That'd be nice. Um, so yeah, get Rob there. If not, at least do me the favor and follow him on social media on Instagram because he does Instagram. post a lot of great photos on there, and you can see all of his photography work, um, which he's very passionate about. I think you're getting a little bit more passionate about photography than, uh, I mean, you always have a love for film, and that's yeah. never going oh, yeah. nowhere. But the yeah, yeah, photography takes over a little bit sometimes. I, well, well, I I think for me, I think it's it's, mm, 
it's it's new it's new it's fresh and i'm i i think like i know what i'm doing when i film like i have my mindset and i know what i'm doing i think the photography thing it's more like i feel like i'm behind and i need to catch up right uh so that it's that's just more how it is but i appreciate all the kind words of course man you're you, you good on your photography man we love you um sammy by the way has took i got a couple of sammy photos and holy shit that motherfucker nice. started to get become a little good on the photography as well nice so, way, to, way to go sammy yeah man we actually used one of the pictures as a thumbnail um that we had for this next panel we're going to talk about which was called building scare actors inside and out it was actually a classroom uh panel and it was with Jen. If you guys remember Jen, we had her earlier for Gore and Twenties Month. Uh, she plays a character on the Gore and Twenties, the preacher, and she does it very well. Um, and we had her on, and she did an amazing job. The only issue, which I'm assuming was the same issue with you guys, was there was an alarm going off the entire oh, panel. Oh, man. Yeah, I forgot about that. So, um, trauma, so traumatized, my mind just started blocking it out. Yeah, it, yeah. it was. It, so if you guys were at Midsummer Scream on Saturday around 12 o'clock to about 1 o'clock, there was an insane alarm going off because of the Hall of Shadows and the fog. They forgot to uh, turn it off because of the Hall of Shadows. And not to mention, I had heard they had just installed a brand new system. So we were the test audience for that. Um, <laughs> so it works. Your system works. Uh, we can all attest to that. Yeah, but um, in all seriousness, I know that situations like that are stressful. Situations like that can be um, be taken very serious very quickly because we don't know what it is. So I want to give right. a huge shout out to the, the um, all the, the, the crew at the Long Beach Convention Center and the White Bats for yeah. uh, assessing the situation, making sure there was no real danger, and uh, eventually getting it solved uh, right before the Six Flags panel just in time. So thank you so much. I know it postponed a lot of panels that day. Elvira had to get her, had to get her panel pushed back later that day. But, um, yeah, thank you guys so much for getting to the problem and the source. Uh, I am sorry to Jen, though. I, I did my best in the video to, uh, to edit the audio where we were at the end there was this loud ass buzzy noise which i think was near one of the freaking main fire alarm panels or something but uh, it was loud and people um were coming in and out of the panel to come visit come leave um and yeah it was just good but thankfully for jen she is a very good uh project she knows how to use uh project her voice very well Wow. And the audio still came out good enough so you can hear her perfectly as to what she's talking about, what the lessons she's giving to the uh, future or people who are coming into this world. Uh, overall, great, great class uh, teaching everyone uh, how to build a character, how to build an, a scare actor, both inside and out, how you got to be mentally, what you got to do for character work, story work, costuming, how you're going to talk, how you're going to walk. Like she went through all the things you need to know going into this for the first time. And That's she cool. did it very well. So I'm very proud of her. She did an amazing job. And uh, the video is on our channel right now. So go check that out and support her. Um, if you, especially if you guys are coming into this world for the first time, whether as a guest or a performer, um, it's a good class to watch. And it's a good class to uh, kind of brush up on, on what it takes mentally and physically uh, to become a scare actor. So definitely check that one out. Uh, after... The, those panels was, and this was one that you and I were both at, the Six Flags Fright Fest Extreme panel. Extreme. Which promises to have 11 mazes at the event this year. Probably the most mazes at any haunt that's going to have in Southern California this season. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I, yeah. I'm, I'm excited for that. It's going to be fun. Uh, it's going to be really, really fun. Uh, five IPs. I just, I just realized, too, I don't know if you caught this, but... Uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre out because HHN, I think, got it. Was that, was it, was it supposed to be there? It was the I Netflix don't... one. Hmm. It was I advertised remember. early on and they did not talk about it in the panel. Interesting. I'm starting to think maybe, um, shout out Brian Arsick, by the way. He was shouted out. Uh, I, I was one person who got me into this world when i was first getting started was a guy named awkward arsic brian arsic oh yeah very Same nice here. guy you know awkward arsic then you know yeah, all the, yeah. you know all the old guys back in the day man you know what i mean <laughs> um but brian has done some amazing stuff in the haunt world um if you guys uh i i won't get too much into it but um he was shouted out at the six flags panel this past weekend he's working with six flags to do a 
new adaptation, a new chapter of the um, was it aftermath? Uh, yeah, the the one of their one of their legacy houses, right? Yes. Now yeah, they're gonna, this is the yeah. third adaptation, the uh, the third installment of the aftermath um, now trilogy. Uh, and this is a brand new story, a brand new maze. Looking forward to that. That should be a lot of fun. Army of the Dead is taking over Aftermath 2's old location, which I said from the get-go that was the perfect spot for it. Yeah. Um, yep. All you got to do is just add a couple of Vegas de decorations. I'm thinking the cop house can actually be the vault, and then after you exit there, that's when the chaos erupts, and the rest of the maze mm. is just chaos. Like In my opinion, that's where you put the vault. That, okay. I'm just saying, it's already built for oh, like, it. Yeah, yeah, I could see that because yeah. it's so big and yeah, yeah. They can build a vault in there, so yeah. Yeah. Um, you know that looks promising. I, w I was a big fan of that movie when it came out. I think you and I both saw it in theaters because it had a very yeah. small theatrical run. It was a Netflix film. Uh, Zack Snyder returning back to the roots of making zombie films was great. Um, so I'm excited to see that as a maze. I th I've always thought that would have made a good maze. So now we're finally gonna see how Six Flags takes it on. Should be a lot of fun. Very much looking forward to that. Hope Dave Batista shows up because that'd be great. <laughs> uh, you know, we, we're big fans of Batista both on the screen and in the ring, if you know what That's I mean. Right. You know That's what I right. mean. We saw him in the ring first before we saw him on screen, and he still kills it every single day. Yep. Yeah. You need to get, you're, you're trying to get like Batista, huh? Yeah, I'm trying to get, well, he's, he's trying to get like me. He's trying to get like you. That's more like it. That makes sense. You trained him. Yeah. Yeah. I you're you're the shadow do... one that no one knows. Yeah, you've trained I, all I, these people, and like, yeah, yeah, I showed him how to do the Batista bomb. I believe that. I 100 <laughs> percent believe that. Um, Robin was your practice in, the, you know, you, yeah, yeah. You slammed her on the mattress. Everything was good. Yeah, yeah. I was like, Ooh, Sierra Cat but... Vasquez says barista equals zaddy. I think he meant Batista, but he he put. I think his phone put barista. Or maybe he's at Starbucks and he's looking at he's the looking barista. barista, and it's a guy yeah. and it's zaddy, yeah. or, or you yeah. know, it's a girl and he's saying zaddy, but I don't think his wife would approve of that or his fiance wife. I, I, in the marriage circle, relationship, relationship, the, relationship, the partner, if the you will, partner, if you will, <laughs> LMFO, damn out. I'm correct. Um, no, but yeah, I think that, uh, that looks amazing. Okay. I have to be a little bit honest about this next one. Okay. Go talk to me. Let's go. When I heard it, I was like, that's a little bit of an overkill. If you ask me, okay. The conjuring universe doing all nine conjuring films okay i think that's a little bit of an overkill if you ask me i okay so so we're gonna i th i think it's a play on words and we know we know how people can play on words when promoting things i think it's not going to be as packed as we think it's going to be because I, I had the same idea. I was like, man, hopefully, hopefully it's not, they're not trying to do too much right. in this house. I think when, well, you know, like, 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 well, you got Annabelle, right? Yeah. Annabelle creations and then Annabelle, just Annabelle. And then is it Annabelle origins or is that what it is? Yeah. Okay. So, so I think like you got those three, those three movies with that one property. I think they're going to do something maybe in like two rooms that link to all three movies. I don't think we're going to get like, here's three rooms from Annabelle creations. Here's three rooms from Annabelle. Here's three rooms from Annabelle origins. I think they're going to kind of like mix everything. Like we're going to get like characters from all the move from the Annabelle movies in one room or, or you know, kind of like in two rooms, something like that. I don't think it's going to be, a complete like every like you know this these four rooms are for this you know section these four rooms are for th i think they're all just kind of gonna mix into each other just to because i that 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 area that they that they if i'm not mistaken they're keeping the same area that the conjuring was in last year right and that area it, it pretty good size area but to do all nine films and like give each like film its own like section is going to be a lot. So I yeah. think they're going to in interwove some movies together. A hundred percent. Yeah. When I heard that at first, it, it was a little bit of an overload. Cause the one thing I thought was, what are you going to give a, ro a room of movie, you know, yeah. and put the best scene of that whole movie in one room. Um, yeah. I think that'd be your best bet is that you do collab on a lot of them and maybe, or just do back to back kind of things. Yeah. I'm very curious to see how they put that on. I really am. Um, 
So that that should be a lot of fun. I like the idea that they're doing for Saw. Okay. 20th anniversary of Saw. And, um, you know, they're kind of bringing every movie to life, much like how they're doing with Texas Chainsaw Massacre over at Halloween Horror Nights, which we'll get into a little bit later. But they're bringing every movie to life. They're going to bring on some of the most iconic traps and scenes to life. That should be a lot of fun. Was a little disappointed in, to walk through it at Scream Break. I may have just okay. had a bad walkthrough with a cast change or break or whatever it was. Didn't feel like there was a lot of um, scare actors in there. Um, I'm hoping that this season will up that more. We'll see what happens with that. Uh, but Saw is a fun one. You can never deny a good Saw maze. Uh, those movies are fun to watch. Um, Tobin Bell is one of my favorite uh, actors in, in the horror uh, movie genre. Um, just because he just has that voice that's just like you know it when when you hear that voice. Yeah, it's it's his, really, it's, it's, his, it's his voice. Yeah, it's an iconic voice. It is. It really is. Like Tony Todd, he's got that iconic yeah. voice too. You know, it's yeah. like you just know. Um, Stranger Things. I mean, let's talk about this. We got some good concept arts of Stranger Things. Um, yeah. the facade looks amazing. Looks like the gymnasium from Hawkins yeah. High. I'm excited to see what they bring to life in this one. I'm hoping they uh bring a little Eddie Munson in, but you know, it's mm. like, you know, only time will tell with that. There is a lot of hype behind this. On top of that, all their original mazes that they've had in the past right. outside of After Laugh, a- Aftermath 2 is coming back. So you're going to see all the the original favorites that you know and love. They'll all be back. Bolt 666, Condemned, Truth or Dare, Willoughby's. Um, am I missing? I know Aftermath obviously is going to be a third one. Are they bringing back Sewer of Souls? Maybe Sewer of Souls, probably. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's. You know, I I I think um. I'm excited. One one thing I will say that like um. I I have I just I want to see how it plays out because eleven property eleven houses, is is that's 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 a lot that's a lot, yeah. but I'm hoping. I'm hoping that, you know, with the merger, you know, Cedar Fair and Six Flags and that they're, we're going to get Six Flags is going to get some, you know, some funding to kind of like make not only make these haunted houses, but also to, to staff them because that's really that's where that's, it's at. That's really yeah, yeah, that's really where it's at, because you could you could make a house look amazing, amazing. Yep. Yeah, yeah, but if there's no one in there to scare you, it, it kind of brings it down a lot. So, you know, I, I want to see what, what they do with that. Again, you know, the, you know, you see all these properties that, you know, LaSalle, like that, that's going to be like the best of kind of thing. And, it, you know, and Saw, I, I feel like it's a little different than like The Conjuring because Saw, you can pick traps. Like, here, okay, this trap is really good. And there's really a good. lot of them. There's like there's yeah, yeah, 10 yeah. movies to go based off of. 11 right. coming so, soon. <laughs> and you, you're like, we're going to pick this trap this trap this trap and then you know this is the haunted house you're gonna walk through um and also i am glad uh one thing i i have told you is for, with the condemned house i didn't like how for 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 fright fest it was the house party again oh for screen so, break yeah yeah from screen break so they're going back to the original uh like the condemned like the the condemned house not the right. spring break party house so I like that, that, you know, that was something I was like, oh, okay, cool. Like, I, I think that's a good idea, but you know, overall just, uh, I'm excited to see what, what Six Flags does over there. You know, I've always been, you know, like uh, I say it all the time, that's like my first haunt that I went to and that kind of got me into going to other haunts. So I'm always, when they, you know, the fact that they're getting these properties, it, it makes me happy because it means like, you know, they're, that's success to me. Like, the, okay, they're. They're getting, you know, these properties wouldn't go there if they weren't going to, if Six Flags wasn't succeeding at something. So I'm glad to see them get these properties. I'm interested to see the zones that they're going to add because I, I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, they're adding a couple new zones. Um, so, uh, you know, just overall, I'm, I'm, I'm proceeding very cautiously with this, but I have, I have, uh, now, um, now listen to this though. Ahead. So if the IP suck, at the very least, we know the originals will be good. Okay, so we've yeah, been through right. Them. You know what I right, mean? So right. there's there's really no way they could fuck this up. Like if no, you don't it, like one thing, you're still gonna like something. And and I'll say this. I'll say this. Like the Conjuring. I know some people. Here's the thing. And I'm not gonna. I'm not trying to bash Trademark anyone. Trademark copyright. And here's the thing. <laughs> here's the thing. 
So I, I've heard, like last year, The Conjuring, there's people who complaining about it. Oh, it wasn't good. It wasn't this. Horror made here kind of did this better. And it's not, you know, again, you know where you're going. No, no. Like, I thought the Conjuring. That was for, my mistake for for Scream Break and Saw. I was compared, right. I went in with the HHN mindset, and I tried right. my best to get out of that. It's just hard. It's tough to it separate tough. the IP from Halloween Horror Nights. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, so, it, it it it's definitely tough. But I, I I look at them and I'm just like, okay, okay. Uh, uh, like the Conjuring. I'm taking it as it is. I know I'm gonna go through it, and I'm not being like. And I I understand like it is hard. Like, cause we do that, we do that with like from year to year. Like, oh, Origins and Knots was this last year, and this year it's like this. So it is very difficult. But, but at the same time, when I go through these houses, I'm like, okay, I'm going through them. And I'm gonna accept it as it is, and then I'll decide whether or not I think this is good. Right. So, so with with the saw the saw house that they did last year, I thought aesthetically. It was good. There was just no audio. And that plays a big part into, you know, the how a maze is perceived when you walk through it. The Conjuring, I thought they did really good. There were really good scares. The the sets it, it, the sets felt like I was in the Conjuring world, but also it felt and this is not a this is kind of I think the the beauty of what Six Flags is in Fright Fest, it feels very like haunted house yeah so so i like yeah old school haunted house so i liked it um i could see why people may not like it if you're a hhn fan and you want that kind of production i could see someone not liking it and that's your preference i'm not you know you I have did. that preference i was saying oh. hi to Hayes. Hayes was, oh. I was like hi Hayes. <laughs> hi babe uh um so so yeah so you know i'm just like I want to see. I want to go through these, and I, one one I'm really excited for is uh, Trick or Treat. I want to see what they do. And with Trick or Treat. Great segue into that. Uh, you don't think I was gonna forget about Trick or Treat? Because I did not. I did not. The uh, surprise of the panel was director, writer, and producer Michael Doherty did come yes. out and talk at the panel. I would say the funniest part of him coming out and talking at the panel though was he kept looking at the Michael Myers in the in the audience. Oh yeah. And yeah, the yeah, Michael yeah. Myers was just in dead stare. In yeah. character, did not move, did not flinch, and he was just watching the panel, and it was just oh, like yeah, the he funniest was just thing like, ever. Yeah. He was like, that Michael Myers is freaking me out. Yeah, it was so <laughs> hilarious. But uh, he did come out and say how that this one is going to be different from anything you've seen before with the property of Trick or Treat, and that being said, obviously it was at Halloween Horror Nights a few years ago. They just stuck to the traditional movie. This one is going to dive deeper into the lore of Trick or Treat with the extended universe, which is the comic books that came out after the movie. Uh, so now you're going to see more of Sam traveling in the West, the Midwest, or like, you know, the Western times in the 1800s. Well, what's Sam doing in the 1800s during Halloween? You're going to see Sam's lair, which you've never seen before on film. You've yeah. only seen in the comics. They are going to bring things like that from the comics to life, which as a fan makes me now want to buy the comic book. So I know what I'm getting into. Um, I think that's really cool. He also said that he wanted to so badly to go scare at every single park that is hosting Trick or Treat. I think that is amazing. No, this is all at Six Flags, Scary Cat Vasquez. This is all at Six Flags. This is going to be a great year at Six Flags. Yes, yes. Um, I'm, I'm, I think that's the one I'm the most hyped for. And, and, and as we were talking about this, I thought of a great video idea that we're probably going to shoot next week now that we have the full maze lineup for Six Flags Fright Fest. I think we'll do a little hype list for next week maybe. Yeah. We'll film that throw that out there, give our little hype list going um, and whatnot. But, yeah, it, it's it's going to be a great year, man. And, and Sliders of the Night is coming back. Sliders of the Night is a huge show over at Six Flags Fright Fest. Voted at one point the number one show at any Six Flags Fright Fest in the U.S., which is saying a lot if they're doing that. Yeah. Um, so check out Sliders of the Night. They always put on a wonderful, fun show for everyone at the end of the night. And it includes all the sliders in every zone all around the park. So I think that is a very nice touch to include yeah. everyone and, and have some inclusivity of the entire park and the, all the zones. Um, so, yeah, Sliders of the Night is going to be good. IPs are looking fun. Originals are coming back. Um, it's going to be a great time at Six Flags Fright Fest. Praying, fingers crossed. We get a zombie version of the Six Flags Old Man. They kind of teased it oh, a little yeah. bit, yeah. so I'm kind of hoping that's kind of hoping that's a photo op this year. That could be a lot of fun. Um, so from Six Flags Fright Fest, we go on to our next panel, which I believe was Dark Harbor. It was Dark Harbor, yeah. 
Dark Harbor was the one that ended our Saturday. Dark Harbor came in with every heavy hitter they possibly can. And I have to say, out of all the haunts this year, this is the one I am most excited for. Uh, Dark Harbor returning for the first time since 2019. Didn't think we'd see this event ever again. Didn't think it would see the light of day again. And then they came out. They've been announcing it. You were there at the announcement event. Ever since then, it's just been a nice, awesome roller coaster of announcements. Yeah. Leading up to Midsummer Screen, just given the full slate, we got five mazes coming back. We got a slider show coming back. Um, they're going above and beyond. They're paying tribute to the past wall, reinventing it for the future. Um, and they are now getting the torch passed to them, and they are taking it on uh, head first. And they are promising, and it's looking a lot of fun. Um, we got a lot of mazes returning, also being reimagined. We got yeah. Lullaby. We got Big Top Circus. We got uh, Feast. We have uh, Breakout. Yeah. And then we have, I believe, uh, there's one based off a of doctor. Oh, infer it's Infirmary, right? Infirmary. infirmary? Yeah. Yes. Five brand new uh, or reimagined mazes. Let's start off with Lullaby. Um, this is going to be a, a maze that is returning with the name and the feel of it. There's going to be a little bit of reimagining to it. Um, to make it a little bit more scarier and darker, and I think that's the tone they're going for. Essentially, when we were talking about Dark Harbor early on, we were talking about how um, this, you know, the best way to go about this is to do a soft reboot, and essentially yeah. that's what the Dark Harbor is doing in the best way possible, in my opinion. Oh, no, I agree. I, agree. I think uh, we, we... I remember saying, um, you know, even if they came back with the exact same mazes you know it, it would just be i would be fine with that because uh you know they've been gone for you know four years so it'd be great to um, see them again you know yeah 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 so so but you know the, the fact that they're they're putting some effort into it and saying you know what like it's the name and you might see some stuff that's familiar but they're going to be revamped we're not just you know going to be like hey here's everything you saw and and uh you know that you know it's just plug and play kind of thing also also um a thing that I'm trying to remember how, how they worded it, but it was like when they were saying about how we, when they were building this dark Harbor and kind of setting it up, it wasn't like, Oh, let's do dark Harbor from 2019. Like this, it was like, where would dark Harbor be if it never stopped? Right. So that, that to me, that to me told me when they said that, that to me told me right there, okay, they're not just gonna be like, here, okay, here's this maze. Here's Evolution, this maze. essentially. Yeah, 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 exactly. So I was like, okay, like I, I like that because that's that's showing me that you guys, you're not just bringing this back. Oh well, you know, obviously it's financially, it's gonna be a success. It helps the Queen Mary, it helps the city of Long Beach. So you know, all those good things that it does for the community. You know, they could do that and it would just be fine. But they're not just going to be like, okay. Here's this maze, and that's that. They're like, oh, no, no, no. We're going to take this maze, and we're going to tweak this. We're going to tweak that, and here you guys go. Here's It may not be 100% new, but if it's 20% new, like, there you go. So that 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 said a lot to me right there when they, they kind of, like, announced that. Yeah, no, 100%. And uh, Lullaby, that got announced early on. We got to see Scary Mary on the show floor this weekend. She was even yes. in the panel um, and made a little appearance. And that is going to be a lot of fun to revisit the story of Scary Mary in a new dark twist. Um, Infirmary has been announced as well. Infirmary is now a doctor who is taking patients to try to uh, essentially fix Graceful Gale and to make her beautiful again. Um, and they are like a couple and everything. So he is taking patients and uh, essentially experimenting on them. So that sounds dark and twisted. Anything to do with a doctor, always dark and twisted. Um, yeah, that seems like a lot of fun. Um, now we got some new ones that were announced this weekend for the first time ever. Uh, oh, also Big Top Circus. You can't forget about the Ringmaster, right. iconic character coming back to Dark Harbor, bringing a new spin on the circus maze that they used to have in 2019. Now we're going to see what, a little bit darker, a little bit more serious toned circus maze that is a little bit more catered to that evolution that they talked about of Dark Harbor. Right. Um, Feast is making its return in a brand new revamped way. We're taking it all the way back to the 1940s or 1950s. I so like we're going to see an early version of the butcher and the chef. And you're going to see that deranged, how he started becoming the way he became. 
Uh, they said out of everything that they could find that was left of the old Dark Harbor, which wasn't a lot, a lot of the stuff from Feast was still there. And so they wanted to revisit that area and revamp a brand new story for that evolution of Dark Harbor. I'm very much looking forward to this. It sounds very promising. It's going to take me back to the era of the Grey Ghost. If you, if yeah. you know, you know. Um, but that's going to be a lot of fun. And then, of course, Breakout, I think, right now is probably my most hyped maze for that. of the, uh, This whole idea of, like, a jail and everything and, and you know, like, everything that they're going to do in that maze sounds fucking phenomenal. Well, even, um, even just, like, the idea, because that's the one that's going to be off the boat, right? Yes, that's going to be where Intrepid yeah. was. Yeah, see, see, even just, like, that idea, like, oh, it, it like, it's not on the boat because, he, you know, it's it breakout. Like, yeah. they, it's somewhere else. So, I, you know, just, again, not they, they're making the effort. They're making the effort. So, I, I like this. The stories and everything, I yeah. like this. Yeah, and not to mention, you know, the slider show returning. Now, we just had uh, one of the first QM sliders on the show recently, X, Slider X. And, uh, you know, talking to him about the history of... Um, Sam Samuel the Savage, yes, yeah, Samuel the Savage is, I think, the the breakout one. So they're gonna get yeah. more of an origin story of him. Yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, we had Slider X on the podcast like about a month or a few weeks ago, and you know he talked about you know sliding at shipwrecked before it was Dark Harbor, and then being that first sli- part of that first slider team, putting together that first slider team for Dark Harbor, and to see where it's become now. And now all these years later, it's still here. It's gonna be coming back. They're going to be doing another slider show. If anyone's been to Dark Harbor in the past, you know that was a huge show for them. It always drew crowds. It was a fan favorite. It was one of the the only haunts at the time that was doing a slider show because Knott's had stopped theirs at a certain time, and Dark Harbor kind of picked that up and ran with it and made Mm -hmm. it their own. However, they've always had a slider show. They've always had a slider team. They've had sliders. They've just evolved more and more over the years. I cannot wait to see what the next generation brings to the table with this slider show. You're going to probably see a lot of familiar faces returning, maybe. I hope so. Hopefully. Uh, hopefully. That's the hope. That's the hope. I mean, you know, Dark Harbor's coming back. I would I was, I would so hope that we get to see a lot of familiar faces come back. Yeah. But I'm always excited for the next generation to see what they have to bring to the table. Maybe something new I have never seen before. Um, and, you know, just going to that boot camp with the Q- QM sliders, man, there's a lot of very – very good potential out there that could that can really elevate awesome. at that event so or any event they go to so you know that was it was it was all around a great thing the captain came out ringmaster came out it was so great to see the captain um yeah. big shout out to brad uh we've had him on the show before and uh, i remember we kind of had a little exchange um at the the show floor when i went to go take a picture with them and you know if anyone knows in the haunt community uh squeaks had passed away uh, just recently, and he was an old school Dark Harbor guy, and um, you know the captain pulled me aside and was like, "Hey, you know, I, I I've been kind of watching your stuff a lot lately, ever since you know Squeak's passing, and uh, you know all, all the shows with the sliders and stuff, and I really really love your show." And I told That's him awesome. right there, I'm like, "You you always have an open invite, you know, like so hopefully." We might be doing a little something in November with the captain. Stay Ooh. tuned. I hope we can do it. Um, but, no, it, it was great to see familiar faces play old roles again. It was great to just see the event come in with a big bang and just and tear up Midsummer Scream. And then, you know, it's got me hyped this year, honestly. I, that is the well, hi- most hype haunt for me this season. They've even had uh, at Midsummer Scream their the show floor their presence on the show floor with their yeah. like right their, when you walked ship. in yeah yeah that I mean that I was like that's cool yeah that's really cool like we're I, I'm used to seeing um, hay rides you know when you walk in you always see like hay rides uh, uh, display if you will I I feel like display is calling it something it's A photo not, op. Yeah, photo op, but they always do something extravagant, and right. and you know then you know now I, I feel like Fright Fest had started doing theirs, um, but to see the Queen, uh, the Queen Mary, the Dark Harbor, uh, there you know it was display, so cool. I was just like, that's really cool. Just everything about it, the way the yeah. ship was, and and the the shadows, and I was like, yeah, that, you know that made me happy. That made me happy. Oh, I was so ecstatic, you know, just to hear Peggy. 
just to hear Brad again. It was amazing, bro. They they really did something with those characters that a lot of people remember them for those characters. And they really brought those characters to life and, and really made it their own. And yeah. um, I hope, fingers crossed, we get to see them at the event this year, even if it's for, like, a select few nights, because I know they're both very busy people. So even if they can make it out for, like, a few nights, that would be so awesome. But regardless, if, if they can't make it out, I'm just so glad that I got to see them at Midsummer Scream again. The panel was great when they came out. Yeah. It always is a fun time when they come out. I was praying that that was going to happen. Big shout out to Hunter. Big shout oh, yeah. out to Hunter. Um, because for those who attended the panel and watched the video that we posted on our channel or any of the, the Dark Harbor panel videos that you've seen, um, there was a certain scene in there where um, we or they displayed and showcased the QM slider team and the training of boot camps and everything. And you kind of saw a little montage of that. Um, I didn't know that that was going to be in the panel and I wasn't pissed off about it. For those who know me and Damien, AKA dented, uh, we have been compiling footage uh, a lot lately with the QM sliders to help them with social media um, and whatnot, just to have footage so they can have footage, photos and whatnot. From what I was told, the story was last week they needed a video. Dented was tasked with putting the video together. Um, footage that I shot, footage that he shot, and uh, to see that on the screen at Dark Harbor panel was incredibly special. Um, I've said it many times on the channel. Dark Harbor is a very special event in my heart, um, especially with the history of Knights of Horror. Um, if it wasn't for Dark Harbor, we would have never uh, experienced our first press event. And um, I, I owe them eternally for that. And I've been a big voice and advocate since the, the announcement of it not coming back for it to come back. Uh, and I feel like every single year we've always made nods to it. We've always made jokes to it and stuff. But um, yeah, that, that was just a surreal moment, a full circle moment. And I got to really just thank Hunter for that because she, uh, she needed the video for the panel. She hit up Dented and he edited a phenomenal phenomenal yeah. video really good really good um and you know just see that up there like i had a mini panic attack in the best way possible um and it was it was awesome it really was so that that panel for me will be a one that i remember forever um, oh no I, it, it was cool because i mean i i knew like you guys worked on that video i knew well i didn't know you guys like that video specifically like i knew you guys were working on stuff and i know like you worked with them and you were going to the thing so when i saw the video up there i knew it was your guys' video and i was just like that's that's awesome because it, it is it, it's one of those things where it's like we vlog things and we throw it on youtube and, and that's cool you know sometimes people watch it sometimes people don't but like they use your video and your hard work like to promote a big event like you know that's that's just like that i was like yeah that's dope Dude, that was, it was honestly a huge highlight of my weekend. Um, I, I, again, I will never, I will never forget that. Um, they, that, yeah, that was special to me. That really was. Um, it may not have been as big of a deal for a lot of people, but that was a huge deal for me. Um, whether or not it goes unknown that that was us or not, it doesn't matter. Because for me, I'll always know that that was something that I had a, a hand on working on and to yeah. be featured in a panel for a second time. Because uh, I, I remember I got to introduce Dieterman and that was a good highlight for his panel, his first Slider Dynamics panel. And then now to be part of the Queen Mary Dark Harbor panel in the Grand Ballroom, like that was just like, wow. Like, I, you know, I've been doing what I've been doing since 2017 and to have a hand in that and, and to kind of... Um, you know, film footage for that and everything. It was just, it was, it really, it really was a special moment. And, and I'll That's never cool. forget that. So that was a great way to end Saturday. Um, of course, you know, after Saturday comes Sunday and the weekend's already over. And Sunday we spent the entire day in the, in, grand, in the grand ballroom after 12 oh, yeah. o'clock. You didn't we're, see yeah, us. We were just, yeah, we were just up, upstairs. Yeah, the whole we were day. frozen. We, we had a thought every now and then. Yeah. Um, but you know, and I, and I, I know you, you're, you actually like the cold. So you kind of probably enjoying the being a little polar bear, you know, yeah. you're enjoying it. It was better I, than being in the fine. heat, you know, it was better than being yeah. in the heat. So, <laughs> um, we started the day with uh, not scary farm. 
came out, you know, gave us some behind the scenes looks at some stuff and announced that Waxworks will be its last year this year. Yeah. Um, 2019 Waxworks opens up. I remember us going through it for the first time. Very hyped for it. Very impressed with it. It has been a fan favorite ever since. I know it's one of your favorites. Yes. Um, how do you feel about the announcement of, of Waxworks finally uh, finally closing its doors after this season? I mean, you know, it, it, it's one of those things where we know Knott's kind of has a format of, of how often uh, a maze will stay at Scary Farm. And, you know, I didn't... I, it, I knew it was going to go. I didn't know if it was going to go this year or next year. So unfortunately it is, it is going, you know, this is going to be its last year. Um, now that that's like one of those bittersweet things. Cause it's like, okay, like we're going to get a new house or we're going to get a new maze. So that's cool. But at the same time, I feel like, um, waxworks has gradually gotten better and better and better. And the performers in there have got gotten like, not i'm not gonna say like better like they weren't good from the jump but it was like you know they find their they find their footing they this is all oh, this will work good this way this will work good that way and the little tweaks they've done throughout the years and which is this just goes a testament to like scary farm and constantly improving never just being like okay well we're, we're gonna have this house for four years let's just you know put it back in and they're gonna go through it you know just the constantly improvements of each house throughout the years so um we're losing a, a a house that, in my opinion, I feel like even the fans like you know, I, I, we when we go through houses, we look at things differently because we're constantly that's like our thing. Like oh, we're gonna go through this house, we're gonna record, we look at all the details again. of things. Right. What I feel like the fans that go like oh, this is the one time they're gonna go. I feel like gradually throughout the years, I've heard like nothing but it's like improved like oh yeah that you know wax wax works that it was like almost like it's always a fan for, favorite every single year yeah, for someone right right and, and, and but it was one of those things where it's like it's like not a hidden gem because we knew how how good it is but it's like the 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 like the the little engine that could almost it's like it you're not expecting it to be that good but it is that good so you know it yeah. it, it it kind of sucks that it's going. I'm excited to see what they're going to bring there. But, you know, we know some of the characters that worked in there. So it's just like it's cool. You know, this will be like the last year. At least we like that's the thing, too, is at least we know this is its last year. So we can go through it knowing like, OK, let me let me take another second and let me look at this. Let me take another moment. Let me capture this. Like and I don't even say with the camera, like just like for your mind, like just to be like, OK, I remember this. Oh, yeah. The 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 you know the big old you know the mount the mountain you know the wheat beeswax and everything yeah. and just these, these the little statue, things. Everything. the statue yeah just you know when you're going through I'll the, mount the world and 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 yeah I'll, I'll, I'll what is it I'll, I'll stop the world and melt with you come on now. yeah a little modern English <laughs> in there come on exactly so uh, you know yeah. It, you know yeah bittersweet 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 let's just think about the things you know previous to that was trick or treat which was another fan favorite um, again constant improvements too yeah constant improvements man and uh i gotta i gotta, gotta stop this conversation for a bit because i'm looking at the comments over here and i got scaredy cat vasquez he likes to be stirring shit up again oh geez. um you know and he says unpopular opinion i'm glad the depths is gone lol how dare you sir that maze was beautiful that maze was a freaking masterpiece that was a cook book classic and you just shit all over it that was the first time I ever seen the laser effect as a swamp. I'll never forget that. He's going into, luck a, going into the ship, seeing the giant Kraken, bro. Jaws, Bruce at the end, bro. Come on. He is lucky I'm a custodian because I'm going to clean all that up. There it is. Let me tell you something. Say what you want about... about Cook, Rob. Your, Cook. Uh, uh, your opinion. We'll keep it at that. Your opinion. Not everyone's opinion. That's right. just so, your opinion, man. Your opinion. When you walk through that, I mean, like, at the depths at its at its peak performance as a maze, you had like the the moving ship. Like I felt, I got seasick walking on that thing, and there was we no even, water. There no water. No None. water. No. Like you said, the Kraken. When you turn that corner. And you're walking across that bridge, the cracking like it, that thing just its eyes just glowing, beautiful and tentacles everywhere. Yes, amazing, amazing. 
uh, Davy Jones when you walk in there, like, and and oh yeah, and, and let's not forget, like you're saying, the cookbook special, that layer of water and fog, and like just that immersiveness, and then not only that, those characters in there, like the popping up and dropping down and just relocating. Oh, loved it, and then to finish it off, you got Bruce. I don't know what you're complaining about, Scaredy Cat. I have no idea what. Listen, it... what happened? Yeah, I'm. You know what? Y'all just gonna have to wait till tomorrow, and we'll settle this. Tomorrow it gets settled. Tomorrow it gets settled. I'll just leave it at that. Yeah, I'm gonna be a gentleman about this, and uh, hold my tongue. <laughs> So Hayes says Debs was pretty, but fuck that eel. Yeah, she, she, uh, so uh, she's not a fan of snakes, and she thinks that eels are the snakes of water. So okay. uh, she didn't like the eel scene where they would pop out of the little caves and stuff. Um, they are very eerie. I'll give them that. They are pretty well, scary looking. Well, t can you just let, let Hayes know that there are actual snakes, like water snakes. So eels cannot be the snakes. The, although they, they, I feel like eels are more. Um, <laughs> They're more, uh, man, I, I want to call them, they're like the worms of the ocean. I want to go with worms okay. of the ocean. I'll go with worms of the ocean because there are actual water snakes, and those things are. She says they, they are the underwater snakes. Oh, geez. Oh, geez. I feel <laughs> like water, I, I think water snakes are actually some of the most, I could be wrong. Could be, could be completely wrong. Don't quote me. I think water snakes are some of the most poisonous snakes in the world, but they rarely bite. Wow. Interesting. Yeah. And then Scary Cat replied, LMFAO, I'm sorry. I felt like after two years, it was just repeating itself. Well, listen, snakes can't just stay on the land. They got to be in the water, too. <laughs> yeah, water snakes are more dangerous. You are right. That's what Hay said. Okay. Hay does her research. I, she doesn't like them, but yeah. she's going to research them. You're, I appreciate you're right. that. You're right. You got you to you you study your enemy. That way you know what their weakness is. You know what? I will say Hayes, Hayes is correct because well, the water, the actual, the eels, you can't run away from them. Like you could try and swim, but that thing's gonna get you. It's gonna swim faster than you. Right. At least the snake, for the most part, and I've heard stories of the black mamba, but for the most part, you can run away from a snake. Yeah. Unless it's Anaconda. Oh. That movie is just. Oh yeah, that that that's, that's real. That, that's that, real. Based on actual events. Jesus Christ! Have you fought an anaconda? I think you have. I think you tore an I think you've torn an torn an anaconda apart with your bare yeah, hands. Yeah, yeah, right right after I got hit by the truck, I fought an anaconda. <laughs> nah, bro, right when you were under the water fucking no, almost getting killed by a propeller and the yeah, anaconda yeah, and you that, dodged yeah, it. That, well that well that's why the anaconda pulled me under the propeller and then I had to fight the anaconda. So saved your life but also almost killed you. Yeah, exactly. That's a story for another time for sure. <laughs> you had to be there at Midsummer Scream. In the words of Hayes, Hayes said it best when she said Rob's done it all. <laughs> I feel Sometimes. like there's not there's a lot more stories that I, I still can get out of you of like your past and everything. That I, is, I, I feel like there is. You just gotta like dig it's deep gotta in. yeah, it's gotta it's gotta be like a like an hour session. I'm just like, all right, tell yeah. me what happened here. But yeah. I, 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 I did a lot of stupid stuff. Rob needs an autobiography. Wholeheartedly agree. Yeah. I maybe. will I will write the foreword for it. <laughs> Um, yeah, Knott's did a good job. Uh, a lot of stuff, a lot of good behind yeah. the scenes. So we're, we're looking forward to Knott's Berry Farm uh, this year. Uh, announcement event, I believe, is August 27th. Um, I think it's 20, 22nd? 22nd, yeah. It's somewhere in the end of August. Uh, tickets are now on sale, though. I just bought my Not Scary Farm season pass today and my parking with that. So now all I got to do is just buy my buffet days. I'm pretty sure it's the 22nd because that's a Thursday. Yeah, you're probably right. I and think it's on 20, Thursday. Twenty seventh is the following Tuesday. Yeah, I think you're right. It's on a Thursday. Also, I got a scary farm pass. Right. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I was going to buy when tickets went on sale. I was going to buy uh, mine and Robin's tickets for the weekend we go for my birthday. You finally caved in. I did cave in, but this is the only reason why. Because I went to buy our tickets for when I go for my birthday. Or when we and Robin go for my birthday. And then, you know, obviously I wanted to go either um, opening day or opening Friday. So then I was like, okay, let me get another ticket. And I was like, hold on. I was like, it's like 10 bucks cheaper if I just buy a season pass than if I just bought the ticket outright. So I was just like, and all I would need to do is go like another time to really make it like worth it. So 
you might see me there on a, a Friday few night. A few times, you yeah, know. Yeah, you might see me hey. there on a Friday night after I get off of work. We're trying or... to get the photography portfolio up, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all I'm trying to do. That's, that's all we're trying, trying to do. do. And that's what and that's I, for. And I also bought the parking to go with it. So... I'm just There's saying, no. on a random Sunday night, we're going to be over at Not Scary Farm, me, you, and Hayes. And if Robin would like to join us, she's more well, than welcome to, but well, she probably that's, won't. That's the thing, too, is is I go to church on Sunday, and my church is in Norwalk, which is not too far from Buena Park. Homie. So. Yeah. <laughs> You just say the word and Hayes and I will be there in a second. Even so Hayes I is just... like, hell yeah, bro. <laughs> Hayes got hers, so we got ours. You yeah, know, for it's sure. gonna be good. We'll have to uh we'll have to I'll have to I have to check with the boss, but we'll have to schedule some maybe Babe, some Sunday going to knots. out there. Babe, go to knots if go you let me. <laughs> um, you know, there's a lot, you know, we're gonna be bouncing around between knots and dark harbor all this year. Um, but there is we're gonna make sure we at least go see everything else at least once. I wanna go to HHN. Want to go to Six Flags, um, you know, want to well, go to Knott's, all that stuff. Well then, so. Yeah, then, too, I like to hit those. Like, I'm still, like, I'm trying to talk to the the Lights Out people at Pomona right now. Yes. Um, um, I, I honestly had a lot of fun with that last year. Oh, yeah, I thought I thought it was really good. For a first-year first event, like, Not I, thought bad. They, I thought they did a good job. I thought yeah. they did a really Mazes good job. huge, and they were fun. Oh, yeah, for sure. And then, you know, just they had, like, the little... Uh, uh, did you do the zombie shooting one? The shot zombie With the shooting little rubble ball. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, the, like, like yeah, that. The that. Yeah, that was cool. That like, was just fun. This, you know, the food they had pretty decent food there. I thought that was good. Yeah. Overall, I thought that event was was a good, solid event, and not too not too expensive. Yeah, so, but yeah, I'm, you know, I I I know you. Anytime we can, like, we try to hit these smaller ones. But like, that's and that's another reason reason why I was so hesitant to buy like passes in the in the past was because i really do try to go to like you know high desert or or lights out or you know now fear farms coming down here they're gonna I can't be wait in, for that corona yeah yeah they're gonna be corona so that i mean that's like 40 minutes away from me so yeah. if if that so i'm like okay now let me throw fear farm on the list because i've heard nothing but really good things about fear farm i just they they've been in feeling which is almost like i feel like a two-hour drive from where i've been so now they're a little closer. I'm like, all right, I got to go check them out now. So, yeah, yeah there's a lot of that. There's bigger a bigger property of, for them, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm excited, you know. But, yeah, that's the, that's all. And, you know, you know, um, that's a, that's been a really, like, the main reason why I just was like, I'm hesitant to get a pass to any yeah. place because how often am I really going to go? Yeah, but, and I would say if you go at least two or three times, it pays for itself, you know. So. Well, yeah, because like like I said, like you know, I already got two days down for knots, and it's already paid for itself with that. I really only have to go one more time to make the parking worth it. So, like it, it, three times in a season, like that that that's nothing. I might be there all three times with you too. I'll, I'll make it sure. happen. I'll like, I'll like let's go. Yep. Uh, next, uh, we did a fun one, which was really cool to sit in, which was home haunt. To pro haunt i didn't uh, get to go to this one so yes we, i was go ahead, go ahead. What, were you, what were you saying oh no i was just gonna say i was disappointed because you know i'm a big fan of the home haunt so i was just you know but with with the scheduling and how the panels worked out i just couldn't make it to that one right uh me and sammy were sitting front row for that one because uh nice. our good friend jacob was up there pirates yeah. cave uh we love the pirates cave and to see where jacob has uh catapulted from uh, when we met him in high school to where he is now working at Knott's, uh, awesome. that was awesome. such a fun panel, such a great panel. Uh, you had the owner of Rainer Tear on there. You had the owner of Fear Farm on there. Uh, you had the owner of, I believe, I think he used to own Sinister Point, if I'm mistaken. I, I may have that I, wrong. Yeah, wrong. I, I'm but, not. I feel like I've, because I've watched some of the video. I'm, I think right. that sounds very familiar. It does. Okay. Uh, and then, of course, we had uh, Ted Doherty on there, who is uh, known for 13th Floor, his work at Not Scary Farm, and uh, anything 13th Floor has had a hand in. L.A. Haunted Hayride, Queen Mary's Dark Harbor. Uh, he's worked with Plague Productions, obviously. And, uh, yeah, Jeff owns Sinister Point. Perfect. Um, and, of course, John Murdy was in a panel that wasn't a Halloween Horror Nights panel, which I was very um, awesome. That was very awesome of him to uh, very do cool, that. Very cool, very cool. You know, it was probably more of a kickback for him because he's usually the one that's always uh, – running the show on his panel so to have him kind of kick back and listen to stories and then tell his story that was really cool rick west was the moderator good uh, okay good buddy rick west um and that's another reason why we went to support rick as well um and they did a killer job 
you saw a lot of great photos of the past to the present and um I think they they kept ha they kept uh, getting on Jacob because he's like yeah when I was born in like 2002 and like back in 2014 they're like yeah you're making us all old on the stage but uh, it was great dude you heard everyone's backstory and uh, how they got to where they are in the haunt industry today um, I'm glad I got that on camera for anyone that is interested in wanting to be in one of those positions in the haunt uh, world this is the panel for you to watch uh, this gives you great insight from the smallest of small to the biggest of big and everything in between. So um, people from all different haunts, shapes and sizes, you know, like to see where they are now and what their the impact they're having on the industry. It, it, it was it was such a good panel. I'm very proud of Jacob. He went yeah. up there and did it like a champ. I, I got to talk to Dave afterwards, his dad, who we've uh, also featured on the channel many times. Um, and Dave is is such a nice person. We had a great conversation. Um, which also brings me up to a point, another shameless plug. We did a cool documentary of the behind yeah, the scenes of their did. last, yeah, their last year of um, their Pirates Cave maze. Uh, check that out. We were talking about that over the weekend, reminiscing on that. That's like a relic now. Uh, and we were like the only ones to get to do that. They invited us out one day, and, and we just filmed it real quick and got it done. That was, that was a fun day. Uh, it was a good, I think, I think we did a good two, three-hour shoot day. But uh, it was a good one. It was fun. It was great to see everything, how it is in the light and how it, how it works. That was so cool. Um, I'm so proud of Jacob, and I can't wait to see what the future holds for him. He's only getting better and better and mastering his craft as he goes. Uh, so congratulations, Jacob. You deserved just as much as every other pe person on that panel to be on that panel. So congratulations, kid. You made it, and I am one of your biggest supporters and will always be one of your biggest supporters. Oh, yeah. It was, it was uh, you know, just at the event itself uh you know i've i've met jacob through you know going to pirates cave with you and uh he's always been i think from the the moment i met him before he like knew who i was and i just knew him through you know the pirates cave super nice super nice guy uh, always ever since that moment always been like hey rob what's going on super happy very like you know it, to see his success it is just like you know and all the and it's not one of those things like oh he's so lucky it's like the kid worked who's his ass now, off yeah the kid who's now a man worked his ass off to get where he's at and it's so cool because he's such a genuinely nice person who's i remember running into him to in the hall of shadows and just being like you know i i don't want to bother him i know he's a busy guy like and i know some people like say like oh well you're busy too but now nah, he he's doing things like i'm just recording like he's doing things and I don't want to bother him, but you know, he came over and spent like five, 10 minutes with me, just chit chatting about the houses and, and or the mazes and hall of shadows. And, Oh, what'd you think of this? What'd you think of that? Oh, how's everything been going? This, this, and that, like just a super cool kid. And, and all the, all the success that he has now and that will get, he's worked for and he deserves and he's earned. So again, yeah, yeah like, like I echo you like, congratulations, you know, just, I remember going through pirates cave that, that last year and, I was just like, this isn't, oh, this isn't a, this isn't a home haunt, bro. Nah. Like this is, this is like legit, like this not, is a pro haunt. Yeah. This is a pro haunt. Like this is stuff, you, like stuff you see in there, like, like you see a not scary farm and yeah. you know, it's just like, it was cool to see that. And, and, uh, you know, it, it's cool to see his success. And again, you know, a hardworking kid, very nice person. So, you know, congratulations to him. Yeah, and, and he's a perfect example of uh, never forget where you came from. He yeah. he never forgot where he came from, and he's very grateful and thankful for the opportunity that was given to him by the VP of Entertainment at the time at Knott's Berry Farm. And he is doing stuff not only during Halloween time, which that is his specialty, but he's also doing stuff in the off season to uh, further the park's uh, enhancement experience for all the guests. So uh, big shout-out to Jacob. We're very proud of you, kid. And... Uh, we can't wait to see what you had a hand in this haunt season because uh, my favorite part of Knott's is seeing you walk around everywhere, going through all the mazes, making sure everything's going yeah. good, and uh, giving us the little 411 as to what's going on in the world of Knott's Scary Farm. Uh, big shout out to him. Big shout out. So, yeah, good, good panel, fun panel, very educational panel, and it was great to see everyone's uh, their roots and where they came from. So, very cool. 13th floor entertainment, man. Now, this is the panel you're not going to see on Nights of Horror this year, and I fucking feel very shitty about that. But 
doesn't mean I won't be able to talk about it because there was a yeah, lot we to break we down. We talk about it. We'll break it down big time for you like you were at the panel. Right off the bat, Delusion. Delusion, we got to go for the first time last year at their uh, final year in their Pomona location. Delusion is by far one of the greatest haunts I've ever been to, theatrical experiences I have ever been to. Uh, they really immerse you into that story, and it is just one of the most terrifying stories. Uh, that is a horror movie. You were brought to life in a horror movie. Very fun, very immersive. You know, you're really into the story, and uh, it's very interactive. A lot and of you're fun. trying to, and you're trying to get me to go to this. They don't uh, touch you, Rob. Okay, you know what? I'll say this. I'll say this. I would have gone last year. I was this close to going last year, but I was on vacation because, and I got, let me, let me say this right now too. I don't know if he'll watch this or not, but I got to shout out Nico. Uh, Nico hooked me up. He let me help him with media this Big year. Big shout out Nico. Screen. We love you. Yeah. Nico. Yeah. Love Nico. Uh, Entertainment Connection. Uh, thank you so much. He let me uh, kind of, you know, I got to help him out, you know, recording things and, getting him some footage and, you know, waiting in line for him and with him. So thank you so much. But Nico invited me to go last year because he was like, hey, I got like media for uh, Delusion. Do you want to go? And I was like, I'm on vacation. I was like, otherwise I would. I even had talked to Robin about like maybe like leaving early so we could come back. And because like, it was like, no. <laughs> well, it wasn't even that. It, it, if it was any other day, I probably would have got the OK, but it was the day we were coming home. So it was like, I already knew she was going to be tired and we were going to be rushing and having to load up everything from up in big bear to drive back down and then drop everything off and then go meet Nico. I was like, ah, I would do it. But then I had to think like, okay, well, I know Robin's gonna be tired. She's not going to want, she's going to need help unloading things. And I'm going to be like, Oh, let me grab my camera. Let me get this. So I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to have to hold off on that, but I would have gone last year, but yeah, vacation. Vacation. vacation but i am i am open especially okay so you know they showed some pictures and stuff of where it's going to be at this year that place looks pretty cool that place looks really cool yeah I, i'm more open to go to it this year i uh i the new okay so the red castle is the theming of this one okay um i'm so excited to see what this has to hold it's going to be fun it's going to be an location in la this year um, delusion, like I said, it, it just, they really immerse you into that story and make you feel a part of that story. Uh, and you play a major role into that story. Um, okay. it's a lot of fun, a lot of great fun. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's just, it's fun time, dude. Like it, it is just, I, there, you have to see it for yourself and they do so much fun stuff. Like it, when we went to the last year's, like the main house wasn't even the haunt. That was just your pre-show room. That okay. whole house in the front they had last year was just your pre-show. They had like little like uh, they have like um, magicians upstairs. They had palm readers, um, and then of course they had like a little show upstairs for VIP, which I don't think we had, but we we didn't get to see it. Um, it was like a little pre-show that you could exclusively go and see with VIP. And then of course um, they had bars in the back. Uh, a lot of sitting, lounging, and stuff while you wait. Uh, a little display set up that kind of enhanced the story a little bit before you went in. And then um, if you were VIP, there was a secret bar in the very back where the actual maze was okay. or the experience. And um, within that, there was, of course, a bar, nice little lounging area, very nice little lounging area. And then um, you had the opportunity as VIP to actually be a part of the experience. There was one area where there was a bunch of zombies on the floor, and you had the, you had the, as VIP, they would bring you into that room before the guests would come in, and then they would cue the zombies to come up, and you would actually play one of the zombies chasing after the guests. Ooh, interesting. So that Very was a lot of fun. Yeah, that, that was a lot of fun to give the uh, guests the kind of the, the scare actor treatment. Um, I don't think I've ever seen any haunt do that before. Uh, and what I love about Delusion is you're in a, a group with only so many number of people that that's how it feels more immersed is that okay. you kind of your focal point is they're going to be talking to each and every one of you individually or all of you at the same time, but you're going to feel included. Um, it's such uh, me just being a theater fan. I think that's why I loved it so much because it is okay. immersive theater. Essentially. Um, they don't touch you. 
or anything, but it, it is a very, um, not to say intense, but it's a very, uh, you're going to, the adrenaline is going to spike in the best way possible. And I love it. Rob, we're going to have fun. You're going to be, you, I can't wait to show all of you the footage of me at Zoe Reborn last night. Um, well, I'm going to be getting the security footage sent over to me. They, uh, they're going to be sending it over to me. I think that's really cool. That is and cool. I'm going to be trying to cut. I'm not, cause I don't want to give away the escape room, you know, like I don't want to give away, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, the, the secrets of how to do the puzzles. Like I literally just want to cut all the funniest moments in our escape room. And there's a lot of them. There is a lot of them. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about that more later, but, um, yeah, delusion is going to be great this year. Cannot wait for delusion. Uh, looking forward to that. Then we went on to some more Dark Harbor, and that's when we got the announcement of Feast. We already talked yeah, about right. Feast, and that was a lot of fun. L.A. Haunted Hayride is coming back. They are doing uh, a brand-new layover for Midnight Mortuary. They're doing a brand-new 80% layover for Trick or Treat, and they are bringing back the doorbells for Trick or Treat. Yes. On top of that, finally giving us a working carousel that we've been teased for for many years, and now yeah. you're finally going to be able to ride that. Uh, looking forward to that. Uh, Dead End Diner, or no, um... What was the new one last uh, year? Hill, Hill Hellbilly. Billy, Hellbilly. Yeah, Hellbilly. There you go. Yeah, Hellbilly something. Uh, Hellbilly Deluxe. That's uh, Rob Zombie. Uh, <laughs> they are going to be doing some revamps on that, and there's going to be some new stuff. Uh, looks like there's going to be a, a town hall in the Haunted Hayride now, so that's going to be good. Monty Revolta is returning, and I think he's doing a little bit more this year than just singing, so that should be a lot of fun. Um, Monty's entrance, by the way was so fucking hilarious with the song <laughs> and then he when he thought it stopped and he, he started talking and it went over again yeah <laughs> i love monty monty is so, such great comic relief uh yes, if you go is. to if you go to the hayride you've got to see a monty revolta show it's it's a must it is oh, a for must sure every for season. sure um but yeah it, it looks like it's gonna be you all want some more immersive stuff you got to do a show with the pain academy and tattered and frayed Okay, OMG, it was so fun. Yeah, Hayes had a great time with Zoe last night, too. Um, but, yeah, and then, of course, they announced their uh, Jack-O-Lantern event returning this year uh, with, I think they said, over 1,000 pumpkins lit up. So that's uh, that's fun. We got free tickets to both Hayride and that. So you can expect that from the Nights of Horror this haunt season. We just got to choose our dates. Um, Hayes did not make the panel, but I still made sure she got her free tickets. Yeah, good to go. Uh, I need to make sure she comes with me because she is my ride or die, and uh, it, it, it wouldn't be haunt season without her. So, man, yeah, I have to. Robin, you'll be asleep at eight o'clock. So, <laughs> while the I while st- while the inmates run the asylum she, at night, yeah, she's she's still my ride or die. She just goes to bed at eight. Just goes to bed at eight, but you yeah. know, she'll she'll do a haunt or two. Doesn't can't guarantee she'll stay awake for all of it. Well, but she'll do a haunt that, or two. That, that's why I'm okay with. She saves it all up for Scary Farm one time, and I I love her for it. Yes. Okay. Well, that's that's all we need right there for the birthday, right? Yeah. I love it. Uh, and then we ended the day. Halloween Horror Nights came in, and let's talk about this line real quick. This line. Let's talk about it. Gets crazier and crazier every single year when we got out of fucking. One pan, I think it was home haunt to pro haunt. The line for HHN was already forming. I think that was still two hours away from the panel. And yeah, the line was already forming. Well, well, here's the thing though. Here's the thing. No, when you were in that home haunt to pro haunt, the line before, like during the the panel itself, the line was already being told like, oh, it's. I heard rumors like, oh, they're downstairs. Every like the the general's downstairs. It's downstairs. And we're just like, no, like, that's not real. Like, that's not real. Like, it, it's like three hours. Like, no. And yeah, yeah, that was happening. I seen TLEV put up a, a video of it. Uh, I was watching it during the 13th floor panel real quick. And that line went all the way outside the convention center. Now, I understand the hype behind Halloween Horror Nights. I do. I'm a fan myself. I've been going since 2011. But in my opinion... I don't think it's worth that wait. Okay. okay. If you're doing a general admission. I don't. I really don't. Because, like, I honestly, like, I was hyped coming out of that HHN panel. I really was. I, I think the concept of what they announced with the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, what they announced with the new Lucha Libre Scare Zone, yeah. um, I think all this sounds fucking fantastic. It does. Like, I cannot wait to go through that, that, that new maze, 
based around the, this multiverse of Texas Chainsaw Massacre and an original concept at that. It yeah. Sounds fucking fun. It sounds like a fucking. It sounds like a horror Marvel movie at this point with all these multiverse things. You know what I mean? Yeah, for real. For like real. you're gonna see so many different adaptations of Leatherface. That's cool. Everything, but. This fan base has literally blown up within the last couple of years. I would say 2019 was that peak of it really starting to take a rise, right? And right. then we come back from the pandemic, and it still starts taking that rise. It starts taking more and more. Um, every year, I feel like this panel just continues to get more and more packed, so much so that you, Sammy, a few other people are literally missing panels just yeah. so you can get in line. You know what I mean? And, like, there's a lot of haunts out there that I think do a great job. You know what I mean? In their own styles. Right. And I feel bad because they're not getting the, you know, the recollection that they should be. Like, I'm glad kind of Dark Harbor was on Saturday, to be honest with you. I really was. Yeah. Um, but, like, 13th floor, man. Like, I understand a lot of people. But, like, Delusion and, 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 and Harbor and Hayride, dude, like... Yeah, Hayride's had its problems over the years, and I've been very vocal about it. But at the same time, I'm still going to go to it every single year. Oh well, I honestly, I think like Hayride, just the stuff Last that they year announced. Uh, just the stuff that they announced for this year and Hay at Hayride, just even like um, them talking about the issues that they know about that they've heard, and kind of like, well, we're doing this to address that. I think Hayride's going to be really good this year. Like, like you yeah. said, last year they improved, and I think, I think this year. Just, again, just I, I look at I look at events and I say, are you keeping it the same? Are you improving it? And right. and, and hey, hey, ride said stuff that makes me believe that they're improving it. Like, oh, you this is a complaint we had. This is what we're doing to address it. Whether it works or not, I don't care. I see you making the effort to improve things. So I think hey, ride's going to be good this year. But yeah, it. Th that is and also for me i'll say this and it, like uh with with castle dark and they're ha they're having their panel early uh saturday i'm just like if if that was on a if that was on sunday like i'm missing it and 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 like you're saying like these smaller these smaller haunts like you know kind of aren't getting the shine they're getting that overshadowed they get. yeah they're getting overshadowed that's what it is they're getting overshadowed so um you know, it it, 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 I don't know. It's, it's tough, man. It's tough. Cause I get, you want to be there when they announce things and I get the excitement. Cause when they announced Texas Chainsaw, the, like the legacy, it, the place erupted. Yeah. It was like, what? And I get wanting to be a part of that. I mean, we're wrestling fans. We, the, the pop, we know about the pop, but at the same time, it's like, like three hours. And then, and then these other, these other haunts are getting kind of overshadowed. It's like, yeah. You, where do you find the, the medium for it? Now now that I got the negatives out of the way, that being said, the panel was fantastic. John Murdy came in, swinging away, hit a home run with it, and he like he does every single year. Uh, I'm very excited for Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Uh, it's a brand new original maze that they're designing. They, they worked very closely with... Um, you know, the, the Hooper family and, and everyone that's been involved with Texas Chainsaw Massacre to bring this to life. This looks very promising. This looks very fun. Uh, and honestly, like, this is the first time I can go into an IP without having any expectations or, like, any, like, I'm going in blind. So going yeah. in blind, like, it helps so much to the fact where I'm like, holy fuck, like, I can actually go into a Texas Chainsaw Massacre not knowing what's going to happen. Like, right. that's so cool to me. So I'm looking forward to that. I cannot wait. The Lucha Libres. I mean, I, I, you know, we talked to Murdy, and one of the questions we asked him was like, you know, we told him, you know, wrestling's hot right now, and and he's well aware of that. And you know, like, what a better time to do this. And he's like, no, we couldn't agree more. Like, you know, the concept sounded cool and everything. And, and he's like, like you said, wrestling is really hot right now. So I think it, the, it was just the perfect time to do it. Um, so I mean, I'm looking forward to that Lucha Libre. Uh, scare zone, like catch me in that zone and, and chainsaw punks every <laughs> night. By the way, chainsaw punks got announced today. Uh, I'm very excited for that scare zone too, just because I'm a punker myself. So that's really cool. Um, but you know, Horror Nights is coming, and then they announced their Universal Monsters maze, the the female one, which is going to be. I think it's is it called Eternal Bloodlines? Eternal Bloodlines, yeah. Yes, that that looks promising. I'm very excited for that. Um, that should be a lot of fun. 
you know, we got a lot. We we still got a few things to be announced uh, with the, with a tear tram, and I believe a maze or two left. Um, but it's looking like a pretty stacked year at Horn Nights, and Murdy came in swinging, showing us concept arts of uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, showing us concept arts of the Scare Zone for the uh, Lucha Libres, showing us some concept arts he probably shouldn't have been showing us, but he showed us anyway. Uh, yeah. And that got announced too. The Crows uh, Scare Zone is getting uh, uh, getting the Scare Zone this year. The Crows been famous. Uh, the last couple of years at Horn Nights. Now they're getting their own scare zone. Right. It's officially so. a murder. It's, it's a murder. A murder. It's a murder now. It's going to yep. be great. Uh, we're getting a lot of scare zone announcements right now. At Halloween Horn Nights. So that's really good. So stay tuned for that. Overall, though, Midsummer Scream weekend went by in a flash. And uh, now we look forward to haunt season. Now, I thought going after Midsummer Scream that that was going to be my fix. And then Tuesday rolled around. Tuesday, I was given the opportunity <laughs> to uh, interview Christina. Uh, Christina is the owner and uh, creator of the Zoe Reborn Escape Room out in Fullerton, California. The podcast will be out next week. We had a really wonderful talk about the idea of Zoe, all the other escape rooms they have to offer there, and just overall who she is as a person and, and where she got her inspiration uh, she also is a, a former scare actress over at Not Scary Farm and uh, did a couple years there. We didn't get quite too much into that. Next podcast we have her on, we definitely will. They got another uh, immersive horror escape room coming out called Pinocchio Master of Puppets, Ooh. which is uh, a synopsis going basically. That's coming out October 1st, and the synopsis is Pinocchio's grown up. He's a teenager now, so he doesn't really need Geppetto, and Geppetto's getting grumpy and old. And he is uh, starts to lose it after Pinocchio leaves. So now instead of turning toys into children, he's going to be turning children into toys. Ooh. And he's never, never let him go. Shout out to Scaredy Cat Vasquez, by the way. Just gifted one sub to my girlfriend. Now my girlfriend is now a subscriber of the channel. Thank you, Scaredy Cat Vasquez, for the one nice. gifted sub. Appreciate you very much. And you take, of course, the number one spot for the most gifted subs this month. Very much. Did I just get another? Thank you, Scaredy Cat Vasquez. Okay. It's a big shout out. Big shout out to them. Um, yeah, no. Uh, so, that being said, we were offered to play Zoe Reborn. Uh, complimentary on them. I really very much appreciate the hospitality of them coming over. Nice. Uh, letting us come down and host us. Uh, for this uh, escape room. I'm not going to get too much into detail about this escape room until we film an episode of the Strange and Unusual podcast, which is going to be making its return very soon because um, me and Hayes want to do a full breakdown of a uh, haunt season, what you can expect this year, and we want to go full in depth in Zoe because uh, she was with me to experience it. So all I will say was this. This was my first extreme anything. So what is extreme for a lot of people that don't know what that may be? Usually when you go to an extreme haunt, you pretty much have to sign a liability waiver because you are going to be pulled, you are going to be dragged, you may be shocked, you may be getting wet. Uh, there is no limits as to what they can and cannot do to you in there. Uh, within reason, obviously. You know, they're not going to do anything to really harm you. It's just mostly to make your adrenaline spike and to really put pressure onto the escape room. I was fortunate enough to get uh, Sage as Zoe and Matt as, uh, I forget the guy's name, but he's supposed to be like the, the owner of the house and everything like that. I think the dad. Um, and we had an amazing game master over the walkie-talkie by the name of Nico, ironically. <laughs> um, you know, I, I was super nervous going to this. I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, cause I've advocated for years. I do not like to be touched. I do not, you know, for every <laughs> yes, action, there's a yes, reaction. <laughs> Uh, and so I was very nervous going into this. And the fact that I knew these people, mind you, Forsaken Lake people, which I've talked shit about in the past, just to, uh, just to wild them up, not like yeah. legit talking shit, like it was just for fun. Um, yeah. Forsaken Lake knows. I love them. I dedicated an entire month to them. I'll do it again. Um, but I felt like with them going... Being part of both being part of Forsaken Lake, I had a major target on back, and I was and I was extremely right on that. Um, you know, it's a very intense game. It's fun. Uh, you know, <laughs> I was gonna say also because your height, you have a target on you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a very intense game. It's fun. 
You don't know when things are going to happen. These characters can be popping out of nowhere, left and right. There's a lot of trick things that happen where you think something's right, and then it just turns out to be completely wrong. I will share one story with you, which I thought was the probably the highlight of my night for that escape room. We're at the very end of the escape room, and uh, there's a scene where I have to go all the way back to like the first fucking room to grab pieces by myself in like a pretty much pitch black dark fucking maze, <laughs> right? Mind you, uh, this building's haunted, really haunted. Like they just they recently had footage of a full blown manifestation manifested ghost walk through one wall into the other. Right? I'm out. I am out <laughs> yeah you would have been so you, you know how you brought up the ouija board the other day so there yeah, is a yeah. ouija board thing in it and i'm glad that all you have to do is put the piece down and it moves on its own because i'm just like i don't want to touch the piece i don't want to put the piece down but i will go watch over there because it's part of the experience but i'm going to watch from a distance but i can't watch from too far of a distance because i don't know if there's going to be someone behind me because they do that here so there's this scene at the end where I have to go get these last two puzzle pieces to complete this puzzle. And you have to run all the way to the back. And I was tasked. I wasn't tasked. I was called out over the radio saying that <laughs> I was specifically the one they wanted to see at the end. Nice. So I, mind you, I had gone this entire escape room kind of dodging every chance I had to get without <laughs> having to be by myself. I did. I sacrificed everyone in that whole thing. <laughs> but everyone was an ag everyone was a champion. I guess they were waiting until I had the very end where I had to run, crawl, get shocked. Uh, it was a whole thing. Anyway, I had to crawl. So I'm in this office. I had to crawl through this tunnel, right? It's a dark tunnel. It's scary as fuck. I had a little candle, a little one of those little electric candles. That's all I had for light. Uh, then I had to go into this other room. There was this f fucking mannequin that kept moving to a bunch of different locations every time we'd go in said room. Scared the fuck out of me because I've played too many video games like Outlast and shit where that shit happens. And I'm like, stop. <laughs> stop. I know how this ends. Stop. I've played Resident Evil. Stop. <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> I go out to the next room. Fucking Zoe pops out, chases me down the fucking hallway into her room and into the room where I need to be. Nice. And I'm then confronted by dad. And it is one of the most terrifying. It was one of the best monologues I have ever seen. Um, I, I think I'm one of the only people that has actually played along with the monologue because you know how the type of person I am. When I'm immersed into something, I am immersed into something. I am playing a character yeah. too, and I am going to respond to you in character. Towards the end of the maze, I kept yelling very loudly so they can hear me, evil dies tonight. <laughs> I went up to dad, and I was like, well, guess what? He was doing a whole monologue. I'm like, evil dies tonight. Trademark copyright in Halloween 2022. Universal Pictures. <laughs> um, and then I had to run all the way back because he was chasing me with a fucking shocking pin. I got shocked at least three, four times. <laughs> it did not feel good. It sucked. It stung. It hurt. I was sore the next day. I was beat up the next day. My knees were killing me right after that escape room. But you know what? With all the adrenaline rush, with all the blood pumping, with everything going on, with me almost tapping out at the end because I had to go back. I almost tapped out at the end. I ain't going to lie. When they told me they wanted me to go by myself, I almost tapped out. <laughs> I literally looked at the thing because you have to put this up if you want to tap out. I literally went like this put my arms down and went on with my fucking escape. trooper it's because you're a trooper i, I was not going to be because i made the joke so one of the things they also have when you get in there which i thought was hilarious was they have a whiteboard and it says tap outs this month and it was marked at 66 just this Ooh. month alone i kept making the joke all day i was going to be number 67 luckily i wasn't number 67 because there's a group that went in before me and one of them was number 67 so i would have been number 68 but we powered through we got through it, and we escaped Zoe. And I have to say, by far, one of the greatest escape rooms I've ever been in. Hands down. I have that, never... Dude, I have that been, doesn't... Yeah. No, that doesn't sound fun at all. No. I mean, I'm sure it is. Like, you know, I, I, I just... I think what made it better for me was beforehand I got to interview the owner, right? Okay. Yeah, I... I 
I get that. Like, uh, I get you. Like, to me, I don't know any of those people, so I would have just been in there, but like, n like, nah. Hayes nah, had a Hayes was quack, having, dude. Quack. Okay, you think I was terrified, right? Hayes was having a Hayes was having a ball. She was laughing the whole time. Oh, I believe Hayes and would be laughing. And she got dragged, and she was laughing while she was getting dragged. She had a ball, man, and I'm so happy that she enjoyed it because, you know. She, Doesn't surprise me at all. She Hayes. Had, and she was, and I always say Hayes and every escape room we do is the brains of our operation. If I don't have Hayes with me in an escape room, I am fucked. I Good really to am. know. She save, is the brain. Save Hayes at all costs. A hundred percent. And there was times where we did have to sacrifice her a little bit. And I, and I, I you know. I gave her a kiss goodbye, and I, I was like, hey, you are a trooper for doing what you are doing, and I love you for that. Now, please go get those pieces. Yeah, just go do it. You're, you're, you're better. You're you the best are. of us. You're the best of us. When it comes to haunt, you are the best in the world. Um, but she is a trooper when it comes to puzzles. She really does. And me and her uh, have a good mindset of kind of figuring things out together and figuring things out ahead. There's been times where we've gotten puzzles that were a little far ahead of what we needed to be. Um, we got through it, and then we had uh, her coworkers, Karen and her boyfriend, were with us. Fun fact, they had never been to an escape room. They had never been to an extreme haunt, so this was a first for them as well. Nice. And her boyfriend had to be put in the body bag. I'll leave it at that. If you want to hear more, if you want to hear the full story, we are going to break down... Um, Karen and Edgar were the names. Big shout out. They were huge champions. They were huge helps of the of the escape room as well. I think we have a dream team now, to be honest with you. Like, we do have a dream team of escape rooms, and, and I'm you, very you guys confident just, about that. You guys should just go around conquering escape rooms now. Yeah, I mean, we've conquered it. Chapter 1 and 2 in Vegas. We conquered Saw. No, we did not conquer Saw. We did conquer Saw. Okay. And then we conquered, we conquered Zoe. We conquered. What else have we done? Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde. Did we conquer? I think we conquered that. We almost conquered that. Maybe I don't know. But you know, we're getting better and better. Right. And uh, yeah, that was. Uh, and you know, I think the fact that Sage and Matt were there um, as you know our our wonderful, as I like to call them, storytellers. Okay. Um, you know, that made me feel a little bit more comfortable in that setting because I knew who they were. I've interviewed them before. I know what they bring to the table. Right. Um, and that, that really, I think made the experience even more fun for me. Um, and you know, the story was just great. You know me, I'm, I'm a sucker for a good story, right? Such yeah. a good story. Um, and just such a fucking good escape room. Like I, I've been thinking about it all day. I've told a few people about it at work and they think I'm all crazy for doing it. I don't regret it one bit. There is a mode that they have called sabotage mode that I would love to try. And Ooh. basically in sabotage mode, you bring a group of friends and you and whoever who have already done it get killed off early on. And now you go around causing all the scares, sabotaging all the stuff. That's, that's pretty cool. I think that some of the ideas that they have at this, this escape room is brilliant. Um, and I hope to God that one day um, I can come back and do another podcast with them, pay for a game. Um, I tipped all of them at the very end uh, very well because th since the game was free, like that's the very least I can do. You know what I mean? Okay. They, they yeah, gave yeah. us all good. Uh, I tipped each one of them $25 because I'm like, you guys uh, you guys gave me this for free, and there's not, I can't say thank you enough for that. So the least I can do is give you guys a good tip because you guys that's really cool. immersed us into this. Um, highly suggest it. And if that's not for you, they also do have some family ones. One that I would love to try with you and Hayes would be a new one that they're opening up, I believe, this week, next weekend, next week. And it's called Rock Band. And you Ooh. actually uh, have to solve an escape room in a, within an hour before you are called on stage. Um, that's, that's cool. Sounds that's cool. cool. They have the Invention Room, which is about Ben Franklin. That's another family-friendly one. Um, and then, of course, in October, they're going to open Pinocchio, Master of Puppets, the next extreme horror one. I and, would, I, I was going to say, I would like to find a, a, like, escape room that's, like, Scooby-Doo based. That would be sick, bro. 
that that because to, I mean, to help to help Mister Ink fucking yeah. solve a mystery. Yeah, to help solve a mystery. Yeah, you would I, need I, to do that inside of a house. Yeah, for sure. Like for an sure. old Victorian mansion. That's what really sells that vibe. Yeah. So yeah, no, and then not to mention, I forgot to mention, Pinocchio is going to be both extreme and non-extreme. So there's going to be a one where they. Uh, where they touch and they do the same things as Zoe, and then there's gonna be one where it's just actors, but they don't touch or anything, you know. So okay, you can go experience that one, uh, whatever your comfortability is. I highly suggest if you're gonna get into the world of extreme haunts, Zoe is a great start. Um, try to get through all eleven rooms. It's it's really worth it, you know. Nice. Just don't think about the fear. Just have fun, laugh about it. We were making jokes constantly. I was I was the comic relief of the group. I was yelling down hallways and because there's one scene where like you have to talk to someone, and I have to stick my head down into the door. And I'm like, I've seen horror movies. I'm gonna get my head chopped off. I'm just gonna <laughs> yell from a distance. They'll hear me. I got a loud voice. Um, yeah, hair was pulled. I was slammed down to my knees a bunch of times. Uh, it was a fun a fun experience. I, I really cool. enjoyed it. I am very satisfied with it. And I again, I couldn't stop thinking about it. Hayes and I afterwards, we were just sitting out in the parking lot and just reminiscing and talking about it. Uh, so fun. Drex Society. We have to ask Drex Society to do an escape room for Scooby-Doo. That would be cool. Yeah. Um, but I had to give Zoe a little shout out to end the show today because uh, that was such an amazing experience. Podcast will be out next week. Hopefully, if the footage does come through next week, uh, I'll, I'll cut a little funny compilation of me getting scared. The group fucking getting scared. Hayes having a fun, great time. Um, all that fun stuff. All of our reactions will be on Nights of Horror. Don't know if I'm going to put it on Instagram yet or if I'm going to put it on YouTube. Maybe both. Um, I don't want to give away too much because I want everyone to go experience Zoe. If you guys can experience Zoe, if you guys want to, if it's in your comfort zone. I had to step out of my comfort zone for this one, and I'm yeah. very glad I did. And I have to thank Hayes for that because... Um, there was a time where I was, there was a moment where I was doubting it uh, when I was texting her about it and she was all game for it. And I think her being all game for it was really me being all game for it. This doesn't mean I'm going to 17th door yet. That's not what that <laughs> means. But uh, I am a little bit more open to try something that is something similar on the same level of Zoe. That way I could still start building that tolerance and to build that kind of like, okay, I kind of know what to expect from these now. I kind of know what rules to follow and all that stuff. So, yeah, big shout out to uh, Scott Paid Games uh, out in Fullerton. They have an office in Fullerton, an office in Anaheim. Uh, but the Fullerton one is where you'll find Zoe, Rock Band, and the Innovation, Innov Innovation Room, as well as coming soon, Pinocchio Master of Puppets, four games uh, that are going to be at that location. Three of them, uh, two of them available now. One of them's opening next week. Pinocchio opening October 1st, just in time for the haunt season. Uh, so, yeah, big shout out to them. Uh, we're going to, like I said, I hope we get to work with them again because uh, they are such a very talented uh, crew and cast. That's cool. And they're very passionate about what they do. So, highly suggest it. Rob, what a fucking weekend, huh? Yeah, it, it was. it was fun. It was busy. It was, it was in a sense... It, it's getting the ball rolling to haunt so what is to haunt season it, it, it would be like maybe a month month uh, i mean if you're universal it, studios orlando yeah exactly yeah, a month it, yeah exactly a month if you're if you're hollywood then a month, a month and, and a week, week. Yeah. yeah so and so, then it just goes but, more and more there it is man uh yeah a busy haunt season as it is we're going to be jumping around everywhere it's going to be a lot of fun you may just see rob show up at places on the channel you may just see me show up on places on the channel yeah, you may yeah. see both of us show up at places on the channel. Yeah, we always open the door for Rob to uh, not only put stuff on his own channel, but to share his experience with the the Knights of Horror community over here, because uh, Rob is a huge part of this community as well. So yeah. we got to showcase the Rob. He's hoking out. He's hoking out. <laughs> He's hoking out. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be a great haunt season, and a big shout out to everyone, friends, family, haunt family. Who came up to us this weekend? Who we hung out with yes, this weekend? Yes. All uh, Nico, Scott, uh, TLEV, John, um, so much more. Uh, the QM sliders were there. Um, everyone that stopped us, that we saw, friends, people that we know. Thank you so much uh, for coming up to us, for talking with us, uh, and taking pictures with us too. That was a fun, 
fun weekend. That, that's that's still like the highlight of your just, weekend. That, well, that just blows my mind that people like are like, "Hey, can I get a picture with you?" I'm just like, "Yeah, but you're like, Rob. That's why you're fucking the howling hour." I'm like, "Sure, get but used like, to it, buddy. That's the first of many." You know, it's it it's it uh, it's always it's very humbling. Uh, uh, thank you all so much, uh, you guys. You know, everyone who's came up to us you know all that goes you know tony the knights of horror we, we you know just everything I, i've gotten so much great feedback from hey i saw you on you know the hotline i saw you on the knights of horror haunt talk all that stuff it's just like it it's very to me i've been doing this a while and it, it it's it's now it's like people are, are recognizing me and it's just very humbling i still got to get used to it i still am awkward when people come up to me and like hey like i watch your stuff can i get a picture with you i'm just like yeah but you're talking about one of those awkward moments i remember there was one time we were me and i think tlv were having a conversation and you just walked up and just started laughing awkwardly (laughs) (laughs) i was like why did you just start laughing you're like i don't know i just feel awkward right now yeah it was i probably thought of something stupid and then it left my mind i don't know i just yeah awkward awkward like that i always will say this rob has always been the comic relief of this channel there's just (laughs) moments where rob (laughs) <laughs> you put Rob and Sammy together, man. It's just gonna be chaos. It really. Oh man, is. I, had, I had so they it was feed so, off each other. It was so much fun. Like I think you and Hayes were walking around, and me and Sammy, I was taking pictures, and Sammy was walking with me, and it was just like it was so fun to walk with Sammy. But it was just hilarious because Sammy was just like, like I'm just going up to random people, like, hey, like, can I get your picture? Can I do? This? And Sammy's just like, like, how are you doing that? Like, I don't know. Like, I'm normally like, I feel like I'm like i'm like this with you guys and like talking like on camera but like in person i'm pretty much like i'm pretty like i stay quiet and i stay in the back but that's what i told sammy i was like unless he's brought into conversation and then he tells yeah, you about like, him he, getting run over by a truck i, I got hit by a, yeah yeah if i'm brought into the conversation then i'm like all right i'm brought into the conversation for a reason <laughs> um but like yeah i was just like when i have a camera like i have all the confidence in the world i don't know it's this it's a crazy stupid thing but yeah no yeah. anyways thank you everyone you know appreciate it all the support and love you guys are amazing and awesome and this really this year i like felt it like it was just like like wow this is crazy so thank you yeah. so much a lot of fun big shout out to Hayes as well yes. she uh came yeah. out strong with the cosplay in this weekend yes she uh, did and yes, she did. that won't be the last time you see it because she loves to paint up and if she could do it every single day she would and i would be okay with it to be honest with you well, um, she does a really good job so she does takes uh it's very uh very lengthy process for her, but when it's all said and done, it looks great on camera. And the right lighting, some of the black light paint really stands out. So uh, big shout out to her and whatnot. But ladies and gentlemen, thank you guys for tuning in for another episode of Nights of Our Radio. We didn't get to play some music today because there was a lot to talk about. And when you get me and Rob on the mic, that's all it's going to be is talking. And uh, yeah. I think we covered everything just about. Uh, we had a great yeah. time. And uh, and I can't wait for next year's Midsummer Scream, and I can't wait for Haunt Season 2024, man. It's going to be great. Next summer, Midsummer Scream, August 15th through the 17th, uh, 2025. A little later than it's ever been at the Long Beach Convention Center. That's birthday week right there, buddy, so uh, prepare yeah, to celebrate. Yeah. Uh, Hayes and I are coming full-blown. We've already made it. We're going to come on that dance floor, and we're going to destroy it. We're coming for that for that dance title we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna face rob in a dance battle how about that <laughs> if you've seen rob dance it's very 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 amazing to watch it's interesting it's just i don't know what happens it's like hey, an just alter, it, it takes over yeah it's an alter ego but me and hayes are gonna tear it up on that dance floor next year I yeah promise. yes yes and then hopefully me hayes sammy rob Tim Sammy and was out there too. Sammy, Sammy was out there too. Tim and Mar, we all yeah. hopefully get together and we can do a dance routine and just show everyone what we got. I'm, I'm thinking, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking a little in sync, bye bye bye. You know, that's probably. I'm for it. Yeah, I'm for it. To be good, it'd be really good. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode of Nights of Whole Radio. If you guys did, make sure to hit the follow button here on Twitch and. Uh, join the community each and every week we do go live with nights of horror radio and then next day you can find it on our youtube channel which is youtube.com slash the nights of horror you'll find the full replay right there covering all we did uh over at nights of horror radio and uh subscribe to our channel and subscribe to the howling hour go follow the howling hour on instagram to see all of his amazing photography that he's going to be putting out in the next couple of days that he's already put out um 
So go check that out. He's also going to be putting up some of his own footage from the weekend, and you'll be seeing a lot of his B-roll. And uh, if you've seen the Castle Dark footage, you'll be seeing a lot of his stuff on our channel as well. So go support Rob. Almost 800 subscribers. Almost to 1,000 subscribers. Let's get him to 1,000. We want to get him to 1,000. Um, so go support Rob. Go check out Haunt Talk tomorrow. If you guys are watching this on YouTube, go check it out. It should be out already. But to hear Scott and Rob's opinion, which might be a little bit, a lot different than what you heard on this show. So you get to hear multiple, multiple opinions from Rob. So that's the best part about it. The best of both Robs. I have, I have a lot of opinions. You do. And like I said, it's pr today was probably two different conversations. You know what I mean? You probably, we talked about the same stuff, but essentially two different things. Yeah, yeah, that could happen. Yeah, it happens. Happen. So thank you guys so much, and we will see you guys next week for Nights on Her Radio, and we will see you guys tomorrow for the Try Not to Get Scared Challenge, Midsummer Scream Edition, this, and then the vlog on Friday, next week, Miles Horror Podcast with Woo. Christina. We'll see you guys real soon.